Freak Up TV, Freak Up Studio, live. 2023 GSL Season 2. I feel amazing. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Season 2 of the GSL Code S. We are back in the studio. Thank God. I couldn't be more happy. I'm here with State. How you doing, man? Oh, it's so good to be back, man. I miss this place. <sighs> yeah. I miss being over. Look over. See all those gamers ready to play out their minds. And, yeah, um, I mean, it's fantastic. It's a whole new different vibe. Yes. Feels like the good old days. I'm happy. It, it's been so cool to see the support online, the support on Patreon, uh, and the fact that we're able to once again do this in the original studio. Um, I guess not the actual original studio. That was a, 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 across town, but our, the yeah. studio that for most of you have known that we've been doing this in for the whole time. Uh, if you did miss season one, uh, it was a tough time. Obviously, uh, Blizzard's been in a bad spot. We didn't get the same kind of support that we had before. And so season one was done uh, online. We were here in the building. Uh, you and I were. But um, the players were playing from home. But with the vocal support from the community, uh, they have convinced Africa TV to put it back here in the studio. And that's where we are right now. Yeah, and it couldn't be better. I mean, I just love being in the studio so much. So much history. And it's, it's a different vibe, you know, walking into the studio and yeah. knowing that there's going to be fans in the audience. The players are going to be on stage. It's it's the full esports experience, right? Yeah. I mean, the good thing about StarCraft is that you can have great games online and you can do it with a very low budget. But there's something special about showing up uh, in person, seeing the matches uh, actually happen right in front of you with one player on this side of the stage, the other over there, um, hearing the commentary, uh, meeting other fans that come down, whether they're local here in Seoul or they've traveled across the world to see the games. And that's what we've got now. I think it's 12 years now uh, of GSL. So still the longest standing esports tournament of all time. That includes StarCraft One, Star Leagues, everything. Uh, and here we are proving once again uh, we can keep going. It's going to be hard to beat 12 years. Yeah. It's going to be a long time to beat. Thousands <laughs> of GSL game. matches, so many champions. Maru's already got six of them. He's going to be playing today in Group A on his quest to get a seventh year in 2023. Is uh. That journey's going to begin now. Can't wait to get kicked off as we get a look here on the schedule, of course, here July 4th in Korea. Round of 16 Group A will be every Tuesday and Thursday for the next couple of weeks leading up to the finals on July 27th, where we will have both the semifinals and the finals live in studio. That's right. We're going to have this entire tournament sorted out in this month. Um, so it'll be every Tuesday and then Thursday. And then in the final week, we take that Tuesday off, let the players rest and uh, gear up for the, the big moment. And then we have the semifinals and the finals all in one day. Yeah, and every Friday, tickets for the following week will go on sale. You can buy those online. I think it's about 8,000 won, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, that, that's about $6 US, give or take. Yeah, and they're online available up until 7.30. We start the show at 6.30, so you can even get here a little bit late and you know still yeah. get some help navigating through the App Store and finding a way to buy those tickets and <laughs> Of course, if you want to support the GSL, you can do it on Patreon. You can also do it on Afrika TV if you're watching live, or even if the channel is down. I mean, you don't have to tune in live to be able to support, support with Star Balloons. But most people watch the VODs, to be honest, yeah. you know, with the time the show is at. So if you're watching this in a recording, you can still support it. But, um, you know, this is kind of the nature of, um, you know, content creation now it is you know, go directly to the viewer. Uh, it's what we did in ASL. It's happening now here in GSL. So your support is very much appreciated. Um, and with that support, you do get some perks. You get access to replays and other stuff. It's all available uh, if you go check that Patreon out. So for the group phase here, uh, and again, if you did miss season one, GSL is a little bit tighter now. There's less players. Um, and, and so we go right into the round of 16 to start things off. We've got a very Terran heavy uh, group with the exception of Classic. Uh, and this may very well be the group of death, but these other groups obviously very exciting. Um, to see all these players duke it out. Let's not forget that we actually had an extremely Terran heavy GSL last season, which really didn't happen for about 10 or 11 years in GSL. Yeah, from GOM TBZ to Afrika TBZ yeah. is <laughs> a decade separated them, but it felt like the good old days, you know, with Maru, or not Maru, excuse me, MVP, right. you know, just racking up championship after championship. We had four Terrans in the top four. And, you know, the same map pool here, a GSL Code S Season 2, if I'm not mistaken. So we might have more of the same. We'll have to see how the other races adapt. And, you know, starting things out here in Group A with Maru, TY, Classic, and Bunny, two very strong Terran players right here, right now. But TY, historically, you know, a GSL champion, one of the best players 
the Touch the Terran race of all time. Yeah, um, real quick note too, we, we do have, again, a Terran heavy round of 16 to start this off. We gotta see as we get around to the round of four if it's actually gonna stay that heavy. There's a possibility it's a very Terran dominant tournament once more. Um, and as you were saying, State with TY coming back here, I mean, this was the other great Terran player. Uh, Maru never stopped playing. Uh, he has not had to do his compulsory military service just yet. He's on the lower end as far as age goes on the pros. So you know, that, that pressure wasn't quite there yet, although he will eventually have to serve as well. TY did his service uh, and then also went into commentary for some time. Um, and so, you know, obviously playing in a GSL again doesn't mean you have to stop com commentating, but mm -hmm. it's going to be very exciting to see how exactly he's going to fare here against Morrow because it's undeniable. As good as TY has been historically, Morrow is going to be the favorite coming into this. We've seen a lot of players also come back from military service or come back from breaks and really struggle to get the ball rolling. I think uh, you know, Hero is one of the few players that truly broke that mold and found near immediate success in his return back to the game. And, you know, T.Y. wasn't able to qualify from season one, but here in season two, he's back. It's a question mark, you know, where is TBT exactly is at though, because he's going up here against Maru, who, as we just said, won a GSL against... I love these empty <laughs> stats yeah. we have here. I mean, it's been a long yeah. hiatus, but you know, Maru, he emerged victorious from a top four that had only Terrans. Um, but that doesn't tell the full story because keep in mind, he also lost to Oliveira in the World Championship. That That's was true. a TBT. And then in the Summer Championship, he also lost to Gumiho 3-2 as well. So he has shown that, you know, he's not impervious in this matchup, despite historically being, you know, arguably the best TBT player of all time. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun one. I do hope it's a close one as well. I would definitely welcome a TY upset here. I think if you're going to be a betting man, you got to say probably Maro is going to take this, but TY is going to be cooking something up. Let's see what he's got in store for us here. Of course, Maro coming off of a GSL domination here. How exactly is this game going to look with, you know, the current modern and frankly, historically the best Terran we've had here uh, in GSL in Korea? Going up against TY, uh, who has at times gone toe to toe, uh, been the best of the best, and of course, come back for military service as well as casting the GSL. Let's go into game one. 2023 GSL Season 2. Side gaming, Maru. <laughs> Kwangdong Freaks, TY. Big cheers here for TY. He went uh, gas before Rax, by the way. Yeah, gas first into his second gas. So going to be a really high tech opening coming out of TY. And two Rax opening here from Maru. OK. So this is a moment where we have um, two pretty peculiar builds right away. Um, you know, normally when you do a build that's sort of, uh, it kind of plays around the normal build, you, you are relying on your opponent doing a pretty ordinary opening to kind of come in there and punish. So there's always something special about two players doing very weird builds that probably don't anticipate the other player doing the build that they're doing, uh, where you can have some pretty fun and weird interactions. Yeah, and they're both a little bit offbeat, and I don't know exactly how Turax plays into this super fast factory tech, and Maruhi, or the SCV scout, will be able to confirm exactly with the timing. Hello from France. Welcome, Welcome everybody. So good to have you here. Good to have people in the audience again. Welcome, guys. Of course, it's good to have you down here. Fantastic having set. an audience. You know, the first day we did season one, I think a lot of people didn't get the message. And so we had to, oh, it was, I, oh, it was yeah. so sad. I, we had to go and tell people who had like flown out here that there was no studio event and look at their faces. And I'm like, oh, God, this is the worst day of my life. Uh, there's some um, sad conversations. Some very but... awkward, yeah, awkward conversations. Um, but it's good that we finally, you know, got the show back where it needs to be. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. So excited to have you guys down here. Uh, we've got a CC being made over here um, for Maru. Yeah, both players expanding on the low ground here. And notably, no add-ons for Ty. So he's just going to be helping out Reapers and Hellions from add-onless. 
structures in the main base. Meanwhile, Maru now adding in that second refinery. And, you know, I thought for a moment we might see Maru try to find a timing perhaps, maybe with, you know, four or five Reapers. See if he can maybe pick off a Hellion or pick off, you know, the lower Reaper count that CY is going to have. But instead, just content to sit back in his base. In fact, even going for a bunker because he is anticipating that Reaper Hellion attack to come through later. And this is something that has been dangerous. I think it was in the uh, Summer Championship where Maru faced off against Gumiho, who did a very similar opening to what TY is doing right now. And if it starts to snowball, you know, with Reapers and Hellions coming into your natural expansion when you is the fast expanding player only really have Reapers. A lot of damage can add up very quickly, but here Maru playing safe. Yeah, it's actually been a little bit of a slower game than I had expected. Um, probably not a good idea right now for either side to attack into each other. But we do have a lot of these openings where basically you get one medevac out and you have a mishmash of units you try to send out and attack in. Um, we saw Maru do this a lot, especially for Zolivera, although it did backfire, but I think the ideas are still valid. And so we've got that set up. Um, he's going to be headed out over here, uh, obviously with the timing of the tech. For TY, he's going to be the first to initiate since Maru didn't go for double racks. He's just going to have that uh, other tech develop a little bit later on. The scout didn't really see that much and certainly didn't see the second barracks, which would have been the most important find there. Yeah, I think he should be able to tell based on the Reaper count that something like a two racks was the opening here for Maru, but uh, let's see what eight damage he's able to find. And man, TY playing with so much confidence now and throwing down the third CC behind this. And here comes the Medivac in the main base. One Widow Mine, one Hellion, a Reaper, and a handful of Marines. Trying to find some damage. Nice connection there. Four SCVs already going down. Um, it looks like he actually is not going to get that medevac. It's barely uh, going to get away, but a pretty easy cleanup there on the ground. Four SCVs were killed, which means that that attack itself probably didn't pay for itself. Uh, it would have been devastating for TY had he lost the medevac. Fortunately, he does get that out. Maru is going to continue to develop in this game, uh, about to finish Stim here. And it looks like he's on the hunt. I don't think he's going to find this medevac, though. It's too far gone. No, I think he's a little bit too far behind that one. And notably, Maru did send that Reaper into the main base of TY during that drop. And he absolutely did see the third command center there. So Maru, with you know consistently good scouting here in match number one, has a very good idea of exactly where TY is at now. And you know, TY, having gone for that early harass-based opening, losing a lot of units. Yes, he did kill those four SCVs. And yes, he did trade out and kill, I think, a couple of Maru's Marines. That is some damage, but you know the army supply, or at least the strength of the armies, should favor Maru here up until these third bases get running. Yeah, well, I mean, he hasn't sacrificed anything, right? He's played a very, very passive game, basically receiving anything uh, from TY and shutting it down pretty nicely. Uh, we are going to have Cloak finish up here. I don't know how much the Reaper was really able to scout and identify as far as what's happening there. I'm sorry, there's no third command center for Maru, right? It's just oh, no, going, I'm sorry, it's being yeah. put on the low ground. My bad. Um, and so that means that they're going to stay pretty even. I thought for a second when I saw two Ebays making, I thought, oh, man, and no CC. This is going to be an interesting one where Maru's going to have to win. Um, anyways, it's actually pretty pretty even. TY's going mech, by the way. He does not have Stimpak, if I'm not mistaken. And there's no tech, on, tech lab on any barracks, adding in a second factory now. So... There is a point of vulnerability where, you know, before TY really has all the tools in his belt to dispatch any attack or harassment that Maru sends his way, Maru can potentially find some damage here. And I wonder, you know, with TY using that medevac to scout, I think that Maru should have a very good idea that this is not a unit that TY is really prioritizing here, that it is going to be mech. And yeah, another factory going down, that'll bring the total up to three. Very cool to see him going for this now uh, versus Maru, you know, of all people. Because um, I do feel like Mario tends to handle this style pretty well. That being said, Gumio has managed to kind of uh, hang and make his own games work. But I do think Gumiho and Ty are such very, very different players. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this interaction goes, and especially as we go into game two. And if we're lucky enough to get a game three, uh, is this going to be a theme for Ty, or is this sort of a one-off tech in a best of three? Yeah, that Banshee finding some good damage. As two medevacs come into the natural expansion here of TY, there is a siege tank in range. They will take some damage, decide to lift up, go into the main base instead. Meanwhile, Banshee, the natural expansion of Maru, deflected here by this turret. All right, uh, Maru's going to come through here. He is going to pick back up. You yeah. know, there's no Viking or anything to basically punish uh, the medevacs moving over. In fact, he's going to go ahead and just drop right on this tank. That's going to be another kill. Now, remember, when you're going mag, then you start to hemorrhage tanks here and there. That actually adds up to quite a bit later on. You know, it takes a mecking player 
longer to get to where they need to be than the bio player, just because factories, it takes longer to tech up to them and everything about them is more expensive, right? So if you can pick off a couple tanks, the actual momentum that you're going to have later on in the game can really, really be hurt. Yeah, and Marge is continuing to cause problems here for TY as the missile turret's not ready yet. Both of them do get canceled. Actually, I think that might have been a mistake by TY canceling the one here on the right side, but in any case, both of them will be restarted. Armory now going down for Maru is... No, TY, although that Sea Shank did get picked off. Oh, hold that thought, actually, Tasteless is... Yeah. Four he's... medevacs going to come into the main. There's only one tank here. One more popped. Yeah, and there's three tanks inside the drop here for TY. Uh, you know, and a lot of times tank versus tank just comes down to a numbers game. So he's going to drop on yet another tank, and he can Oof. immediately slide over to the right and gun down that one before the SUVs really even have the moment to repair that. And this is going to be a very difficult position to control here. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit of a boxy area, so the infantry the TY does have can't quite get over there as neatly as they would have wanted to. It looks like TY should. Uh, just barely have enough to clean this up, but certainly losses were suffered there for TY. Yeah, in the meantime, Maru coming into the natural expansion, dropping on another tank. Should be able to pick it off here with these Stim Marines as he just continues to find good damage here. And I, you got to wonder whether this is going to be too much here for TY as, you know, maybe the main drop he can come back from that one. But with this follow-up attack here in the natural expansion, taking down, I think, 15 more SCVs, the damage is really mounting. Yeah, you know, and um, it seems like what Maro is able to do is, is very carefully pick apart these positions. And again, the tank count is just getting reset over and over right now. I don't know where it's set exactly right now. I'm sure the Observer will show us in a second. But for the number of factories and the number of tanks that have been made in this game, I can't emphasize enough how uncomfortable this spot is right now for TY. He's basically just not quite able to get this game to where it needs to be. And it's a funny thing where you see a player who's going for bio kind of win in the tank fight itself over and over. I think that is in part because the way that TY went into mech, he kind of hit it for a little bit. It wasn't an immediate mech play. He kind of teched up into everything and got a decent number of infantry, which leaves a very small window of time for you to actually come in with your infantry and tank and offset positionally the Terran. And that's exactly what happened back here. Yeah, and on top of that, Maru just keeps picking up hard. I mean, there really hasn't been any substantial anti-air for TY this entire game. So these drops just continue to go uncontested. Even the missile turrets continuously were denied there earlier on. And, you know, Maru, he drops a couple units off. He wants to pick off one more here in the corner to make a follow-up drop easier. But at this point, you know, momentum firmly in Maru's favor as, you know, at drop after drop after drop, not only picked off siege tanks, but damaged the economy of TY. And, you know, to his credit, he's been pumping SCVs this entire time, actually still ahead on workers, but... Yeah, and, you know, it, it's funny because um, when the tank count is, is kept pretty low, suddenly the incorporation of Marauders into the group, you can just shut down Mech. Mm. You know, a lot of what Mech relies on is the first volley of siege tanks do so much damage that the fight after that doesn't even make any sense. You're better off running away or not engaging with it at all. But when that tank count is kept low, um, you could start to set up these killing blows. By the way, this command center is going to get shot down. And we're, we're kind of seeing, you know, Maru do, I, I think, what, the most Maru stuff that we could ever see, which is that he's both attacking and outgrowing at the same time, which is, you know, really all you would ever have to do in an RTS game to win. And T.Y., he's, he's trying his best he can to pump out enough siege tanks where he can finally start to cover all of this terrain because, you know, Maru's just been sectioning off one siege tank or two siege tanks at a time, destroying them, and then just coming back in and killing more once they pop from T.Y. So T.Y. never really hit that critical mass where he was able to cover all his bases. And so Maru now taking a fourth expansion, coming in once again with a drop in the natural of TY. There's only one siege tank here in the main base already set up, and Amaru potentially oh, overextending a little bit here. But I mean, again, the anti air is so lacking for TY. Still no Vikings on the field. Yeah, you know, without Vikings, you're kind of able to pick up and run out with impunity, and that's exactly what's happening here now. He's even going to get that last kill on the tank. And um, yeah, he can kind of load and unload. And, and, you know, a turret's going to be made, but you can always drop in there and pick that off. And I think from here, he'll probably just boost and roam right back out um, and look for more opportunities elsewhere. Yeah, 
finally TY is starting to add in some Vikings, recognizing this is, you know, an issue that cannot stand any longer, but Maru's ground forces are so strong, and with the way that he's been playing this entire mid-game, attacking the main base, the natural, the third expansion, TY has in his mind that he needs to cover all these different sections on the map, but now Maru, he's clustering all of his forces here on the north side, and TY luckily does get wind of this, he scans it so he knows exactly where Maru's positioned, and you know, Maru was able to ca catch him unprepared. You know, with, with now having even less Vikings, you could just dump on top of the tanks. Oh, That's exactly man. what's going to happen here. This actually could be the most devastating moment here right now. I mean, it's another big reset. It looks like he still has more that he could drop on there, but you know, it's one thing to get, you know, that amount of medevacs and be able to float around, but when you see TY still hasn't gotten enough Vikings to drive the medevacs away, it's kind of hard to even have your own tanks in siege mode, right? Because they can just drop right on top of there. And this is kind of a hard game to wrap your head around because looking at the unit's loss, it's about 2k res in the favor of Maru right now. But TY, he's getting to the point where he might actually start to stabilize. And, you know, he has upgrades coming in. Vehicle up weapons upgrade level 2 just completed. Uh, his unit composition is very strong. It's only 20 Marauders and 14 Marines on the field for Maru. So despite all of that early momentum that Maru has had, TY is somehow able to secure this fourth base. And, you know, if he's able to reach a maxed army, which now he's only 16 supply away from, you know, maybe the momentum can finally start to move in his favor. Yeah, it's really been TY on the receiving end for basically this entire game. But one thing about, you know, going for mech is eventually you can get enough mustered up that you're able to finally start to take control of the game and fight back. Battle cruisers, though, are the transition here for Maru, and you know anti-air really has been thin for Ty this entire time. And this is one of those problems as you reach 200 supplies, you can't really change your unit composition anymore. It, Maru just you know, playing mobility to its best effect here. He's going to try and pick off this command center. Luckily, was not yet a planetary, so able to lift and escape. But you know, Maru, he's getting a good look at this army. There's only three Vikings. There's you know a handful of totally unupgraded Marines, and once these BCs come out. There isn't much of an answer here for TY, and he's still remaxing on tanks, and although he is trickling in Vikings, he only has five on the field. Yeah, it's a funny thing. Uh, you know, he has basically, you're right, uh, State, he's gotten to kind of uh, the point that he wanted, but yeah, I mean, the tanks are utterly useless if, if the battle cruisers are out here. Yeah, ba battle cruisers now on the field. I want to see the production tab and see exactly what the response yep. here is going to be for TY. It looks like three Cyclones in production, but these two BCs already doing so much work. Oh and remember that tanks on siege are actually slower than stiffed Marauders and Marines. So you have a funny situation where the battle cruisers can force them to unsiege, and then the infantry run behind and just catch up and kill everything. <laughs> Especially with concussive shell, too. I mean, yeah, we see yeah. Marauders getting dropped out of med medevac, slowing down these siege tanks, and suddenly, in the blink of an eye, all of TY's maxed army just disappears from the screen to these yeah. two battle cruisers. And this is, you know, it's, it's been a really interesting game as far as how Maro's moved around the map and positioned, but it's almost even more impressive to watch how he's basically just stayed ahead in tech to the point where TY is sort of playing a losing game the whole time. Yeah, it's been really a masterclass in that sense is, you know, even when the trades were not cost efficient in Maru's favor, you know, towards the later end of that, he was still confirming that Maru's just, you know, or Maru, excuse me, TY is just pumping out these siege tanks. He has to really to withstand the storm that is Maru's drops coming in from every possible angle. And it felt like a trap almost, a meta trap that Maru was setting for TY, leading him down the wrong path in unit composition. TY thought he had this big window with this maxed army where finally he could get something done, but Two PC shut it down, and now Maru with an almost full air switch, pumping in Vikings, more battle cruisers. Yamato cannon is now done. It's looking really good for Maru, and behind all of this, just massively out expanding TY. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> you know it's not over till it's over, um, and so you know TY still might be able to make something happen, but uh, it does feel like Maru, you know, is basically able to address any situation that could come his way. Uh, we've got him moving in here now. Uh, and some really nice play here by Maru. He's going to come through here. He should be able to easily obliterate these tanks. And even though the supplies have dropped a little bit here for Maru, it, it was actually just infantry. It doesn't really matter. Um, the battle cruiser count isn't getting any smaller. Uh, that's it. Yeah. You know, it, it's a kind of a funny way to end it, but I, I do not blame TY for leaving at that moment at all. I know we have a lot of TVTs that, you know, you see a moment like that, and it would have gone on for 10 more minutes, but I think TY kind of realized he had basically painted himself into a corner. I was curious what he had in store when he went for that attack up the middle. And I, it's, you look at it and you go, oh, there's nothing you can do. 
you've been teched, uh, you know, basically, Maru, I mean, if someone runs circles around you, he teched circles around TY. Mm. Yeah, I was constantly staying a base ahead to at least during the majority of that, so. Omar with a really fantastic game, number one. But I got to say, for TY's first match back here in the GSL Code S, he looked really good trying to play Maru against Mech. Or <laughs> Maru against Mech. Mech against Maru of all <laughs> players here, right? I mean, that was a solid game on altitude. Well, Maru played Maru against Mech. That's what he brought, and it <laughs> worked out. Um, we're going to go to Grasvin for map two. Is TY going to go for... Um, the same tech. I don't know. Remember that that wasn't just like a mech right out of the gates. It was a very uh, kind of protracted mech play. He got a lot of other upgrades. Uh, and it wasn't until we were pretty far along off of three bases that we we're like, oh, yeah, he's really going to go for full on mech. And, and Maru saw a real opportunity. He said, okay, well, you're, you don't have that many tanks. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have about the same amount of tanks as you. And I have more infantry. Your factories haven't kicked in yet. So he started uh, darting around the main specifically and just started picking off tanks and kind of keeping the numbers low and just kept growing. Uh, and really, that's where Mardo got himself into the winning position. Uh, the, the teching from there was great, too. But um, he, he really just kind of saw that one small period of time where there's weakness and went for the jugular. Yeah, the anti-air for TY desperately lacking, and Maru made him pay for that in spades as he takes number one in game number one in convincing fashion. Let's see if he can repeat it. As game number two is loading up, let's go to ESL Gresman. 2 here. I think that we're going to have something a little bit different from TY. I think the idea uh, of what he did was cool, but you could see he wasn't able to really make it go anywhere in that game. Yeah, although I do wonder, you know, if, if Maru didn't come in with that drop ship and kill, those handful of missile turrets early on in the game, and those had gotten up and, you know, you know, sectioned off the top side of his main base from future drops, maybe TY really could have just consolidated his forces and gotten the ball rolling, right? Because yeah. throughout the mid-game, there was just so much almost uncontested damage from Maru, resetting the key unit count and also killing, I think it was like 20 plus SCVs from TY. And if that hadn't happened, you know, maybe it's TY winning game one instead of Maru. Maybe TY has enough tempo that he can push before Maru can really achieve that kind of tech switch in the battle cruisers that won him the game, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, look at this. Oh, is that that's <laughs> a, a depot? depot? <laughs> okay. I mean, is it a very small barracks? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> It it's makes the world's tiniest starboard. It makes starboard. little tiny marines to come out of it. That's cool. <laughs> it's like Warcraft 3. Like you go pick up like the, the, the tiny town hall from the yeah. item shop and just plant it down. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely going to be a different build here from TY. He did not go gas first, although he didn't wall off either. He went um, one barracks into instant double gas. So you know, still playing a little bit offbeat from you know, what is more of a standard meta that Maru is playing, although two racks also in and of itself is not necessarily standard here in TBT. I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to say after casting the round of four of GSL last season because we saw such a wide range of builds from pretty much every different Terran player, right? About right, what is meta right. and what is not. But um, yeah, we'll see where TY decides to take this one. He's already building the starport, going for Widow Mines and one Hellion, one, wid one Widow Mine, one Hellion, and um, Reaper again. So it's quite actually similar in terms of unit composition to what he did in game number one, just getting there a little bit differently. I like the depot actually out there um, at the nine o'clock spot. It's like, you know, there's so many moments where it's two base versus two base and some weird drop comes in and it's all about if that drop works or not. Why would you not just put a depot out there to spot? Because there's so many moments, especially on this map, they can use that left side to slide all the way up into the back of your main without you seeing it until it's too late. That's a move that we see Protoss players do a lot with their pylons, but yeah. not something that Terrans necessarily do. And you know, Zergs, they have those overlord spotting for them, but... Yeah, yeah. 
and creep tumors and everything else. They got, <laughs> they got unlimited they got vision. They're doing fine. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, it, it's uh, – it's I, I like seeing ideas like that. Every time I, I would get to cast T.Y., he'd always do these, like, small, simple things where I just, like, have my hand on my chin, like, nodding my head, like, <laughs> hmm, yes, yes, I see why you do that. You are good at RTS. That's very satisfying in that way to watch yeah. him play. Okay, so Ooh. here comes that drop. A nice catch by Maru coming in with that Reaper Scout. Not only going to be getting into the main base here and seeing exactly what the building layout is for T.Y., but also spotting that medevac moving across the top of the map, and... He might even get an SCV with this. One more hit. He got it. That yeah. is a clutch Reaper, man. <laughs> yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, the Reaper's not going to have any use uh, further along in the game, so to get that little kill is pretty nice. The Cyclone's going to come down, but uh, the drop's already going to be set up here and ready to go. And since the Widowmine can't target an SCV, yeah, he's gonna, he wants his Widowmine to basically stay alive and uh, kill off some other unit. Oh, my God, he almost picked it up. He almost got it. It's a little bit behind from that Cyclone there, and... Well, T.Y., at least he didn't lose as much as he did in the first drop. And behind this, Maru actually going for a third command center. So a lot of greed for Maru here. Keep in mind, you know, game number one, he went for a much later third CC on the low ground. But this time, quite rapid with that expansion. And <laughs> Maru wants to find this medevac. Yeah, he's on the hunt right now. Um, T.Y. staying very... Uh very fluid here on the map. We've got the Viking now coming in here. And he has cornered this thing off with the Cyclone, too. Luckily, the Siege Tank coming in will get a lot of damage in. Yeah, T.Y. is fine, right? Yeah, he should be. Wait a minute! Oh, I'm surprised he oh sieged. Oh, my God, what a <laughs> weird interaction. The Viking's going to get shot down. <laughs> that was quite a back and forth in the middle of the map. I yeah. thought I wasn't sure if either the tank or the Viking, or the, sorry, the Cyclone was going to get killed off there. Cyclone, Tank, and Liberator all, I think, have maybe 15 or less HP. Everything one hit away from dying, but each of those units somehow staying alive. That was crazy. <laughs> okay, so the Starport, um, another one now being A made starport. over here for TY. Huh. I wonder whether we're going to see something more two-base focused, like a, a contained style where we just try to play the air game. And well, I think so. I mean, I, I think that especially – you ever played, like, a long game for somebody where you were you would just look back and you're like, I was never winning this mm. the whole time. Uh, I think that's how T. White feels about that last game. I think he wants to try to take a more active approach and basically try to stop Morrow as he tries to develop. Yeah, pumping Vikings three at a time here is going to mean that he will certainly have air superiority for, you know, the near future. And the question is whether Maru's force is on the ground. I mean, Stim only about a third of the way done. Will be enough to deflect his attack. Luckily for Maru, he's in a pretty good spot. But keep in mind, T.Y., that Liberator did not die. And so if you do have air superiority here as T.Y., and you siege your tanks just like he did, he can force Maru to retract. So for Maru trying to take a third base, suddenly it becomes a very difficult problem to solve. And I think we're going to see Maru just kind of sit comfortably on two bases for as long as he can. Now the Cyclone will be able to get the Liberator. Oh, barely? Oh, Barely no. missed it. He lost vision. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't see it. Uh, that's actually pretty bad. Yeah, I think uh, he uh, thought that he killed it. <laughs> yeah. Now the SCV is going to repair it back to full. Yeah, uh, in moments like that, especially in TVT, are devastating. Because, yeah, as you were saying, repair, you're going to get that back to full health. It's going to get way more value in the long run. Now, note that he's not pushing a, a base. There's nothing over here. He's basically pushing a, a line um, that, that if he's able to break through this area, it's going to be Maru contained. And that's going to be a big problem because there's more Vikings on the map. So dropships aren't very handy. And by the way, it's it's not the main story right now, but T.Y. throwing down two more supply depots on his side of the map, man. You love to yeah. see it. Yeah, no, he's got very good spotters. I, I, there's really no reason why everybody doesn't do this as Terran. Um, but, Especially you know, with this, like, aggressive map control oriented yeah. style, right? Well, this way you don't get surprised by drops. Mm. You're going to give yourself probably an extra five seconds to react. Um, now, th the question is, how far does T.Y. intend to go with this? He could try to push it towards the main. See how he could basically shell the buildings from the low ground here. Oh. SCVs are pulled, so uh, this is going to be it. Marno says he has to end this right here, right now. The question is, does he actually have enough? He does have Stim. One of the Siege Tanks is disabled on the south side, and it seems like there is just enough wow. for Maru to break this position. Whoa, and T.Y. Dude. taps out. Now, the, the patience there for Maru to basically wait until the last second. Because when this tank siege up, it's like, okay, now he's going to hit the infrastructure. This is where it really heats up, and Maru's actually under threat. And that's ex and Maru, he, what did he pull, like 10 SCVs, 8 SCVs, something like that? Yeah, something about that number. The exact right amount. 
shut it down. T.Y. taps out. Maru is surviving the very first best of three of GSL season two with a 2-0. Yeah, going to move on to the winner's match. And I don't think many people at home would be surprised. You know, Maru, the the greatest of all time GSL player here, beating T.Y. in his first Code S back after military service. But I got to say that game one from T.Y., very impressive game two. I loved a lot of what we saw from him, you know, not only spreading the depots, but also the tactic that he went for, that big contain push. I mean, that's confidence doing that kind of build against Maru. So I don't know, man. T.Y. is looking stronger than I thought. He might still have a good chance of getting out of this group despite going to the losers match. Up next, guys, Classic vs. Bunny. We'll be right back.
우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자. 실성 사이다 제로. 여름이 왔다. 마음껏 청량하자. 청량한 순간에 언제나 실성 사이다. 우주급 텐션 최고의 토킹 핫식스 토킹 라운드 16 그룹 A 멍 T1 클래식 버니 아프리카 TV 프리컵 스튜디오 라이브 2023 GSL 시즌 2 <laughs> We're back. <laughs> what is this music? <laughs> Probably a shorter break than usual, too, man. It I did, wasn't ready. Did, yes. <laughs> All right. So we just had Mario. It feels like I'm listening to a recording of somebody else at a music festival <laughs> right now. It does kind of sound like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a little canned. Yeah, yeah. yeah well. uh, anyways, guys, thank you for waiting. Uh, honestly, the wait wasn't that long. Yeah, it was um, a nice, fast one. That's the way I like it. We're back now. The only Protoss in the group of death here, Group A is going up against Bunny. Uh, I would say, you know, as good and as godlike as Bunny is, he is a little bit overshadowed story-wise here by Maro and T.Y. Of no, of no fault of his own, by the way. Um, Classic looked very good in the last season. Obviously not good enough to get, you know, real Protoss representation deep in the tournament, right? But yeah. um, he's back here again. Back potentially My, to get revenge. I yeah. mean, he was he wasn't eliminated, but he lost one of his matches. I think in GSL Group D. I like this hair. This is like I, if I, if I want to put him on the dollar bill right now. <laughs> it looks like <laughs> George Washington. Is, is that your take hair. on the middle part? Is you want to put yes, him on the dollar I bill? I want to put him on the Starcraft dollar bill. Whatever they have, you tra uh, change the, minerals in. Whatever the fiat <laughs> currency is for the Terrans. <laughs> the fiat currency yeah. for the Terrans. You know they that's don't buy stuff now. in minerals, guys. They have to have some kind of bill that represents it. That's a, that's a trend now, man. That's what the kids are doing. They're doing the middle part. That's like, right. Is that Classic stay in Yeah, is that in the, the broccoli, the broccoli cut. Is, is that actually true? Is the middle, I think it is the actually middle is. cut yeah, in man. now? Okay, yeah, I'm on, see, I didn't I'm on, know that. I may be old, but I'm on TikTok. I see that. I see that middle part a lot. <laughs> I remember getting a, a bowl cut in school in like fifth grade, and, and then everybody just laughed at me. And I, oh, had, I, had, I had to yeah. have my mom bring me to the barber shop the next day. We had to cut it all off. <laughs> oh, that's cruel. Yeah, it was rough, man. Um, anyways, guys, we're going to get this PVT. This should be a good one. It Fingers should be. crossed here for Classic. I would like to see the Protosses do better this season than they did last time. Yeah, Classic, I think, is one of the Protosses, along with Hero, that has the best chance. Uh, making it beyond the round of 16 into the round of eight because he's been kind of refining his play a little bit. I don't know if you recall, but you know, the last season of GSL Code S, he he kind of relied very heavily on what was a fragile, to put it at best, like Phoenix Colossus style. And yeah. to, since then, he, you know, he still mixes it in from time to time, but he's diversified his play a lot. He's, uh, you know, put down those nuts and bolts. He's ironed it up, and we'll see what he has. Going ready for map number one. All right, guys, we're ready to do this. The PBT of the evening. Can our Protoss player actually come out on top in a Terran dominant group? And what we're hoping is not going to be a Terran dominant year here. Uh, after we already had a Terran dominant season one at GSL. Twisted Mind. Classic. Mystery Gaming, Bunny. Classic fresh off a top eight at ESL Summer Masters. Best Protoss performance there by a lot. Yeah, um, classic, you know, he's at times been just untouchable and did his military service, came back. We're here in yet another year of StarCraft two, and he's looking like he really is easily one of the best Protosses in the region. Definitely has a different approach to the matchup and the game 
than a lot of other Protosses have at times. Yeah, and he's starting to solidify his play a lot more, too. I mean, with this map pool and also the current meta, PBT, it does feel like Protoss generally is so fragile up until the point they get that third base up. Yeah, yeah. And he's been very good at always playing with that delicate Ooh. style. Okay, so there's a... Proxy um, Oracle, I'm that, guessing. Yeah, that's like... Uh, it's right in the middle of the map. Look at that. I like the spot. Oh, he's going to go for the expansion here, too. Wow. Ooh, is this Hero in the book? Yeah. <laughs> What a fun strat. It's just he takes the mask off, but it's Hero with that haircut. We're like, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. I was not expecting to see this out of Classic today. I thought, you know, maybe maybe Hero and his group would you know, mix this one in. We'll see if Bunny scouts it as this Reaper. I don't think it's going to be able to spot They're that usually gold base. not looking for the gold base right away. Well, what's funny is he is going to proxy. A Twilight Council. Okay, so what? Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, this is fun, man. This so, is not the by-the-book classic, the predictable no. classic that we saw in Season 1 <laughs> of GSL Code S. This is already, like, almost too weird for Hero, even. I feel like we're watching two different builds happen at once. He throws down a Robo, too. Is that also in the middle? Okay. What? I haven't seen this exact flavor of fast expanse of the gold here. No, I've Royal never seen Blood. this before. I've never seen this specific uh, take. Um, it's cool. I like it. I want Bunny to get to the main base and just look at the player cam and watch him scratch his yeah. head and try and... Because that's weird. I guess he forgot to make anything. <laughs> Dark Shrine Dark is going to be the play here. So it's also, gonna be DT tag. also in the middle. Oh, my goodness. It's going to get the Reaper. It's got to get the Reaper. Adept should shade. Heal does not pop. Reaper goes down. So Bunny has no idea what the tech is for Classic. I think that... He should have a clue that something is going on, having seen absolutely nothing to this point. But no one is going to expect a Twilight Council, Robo, Gateway, and Dark Shrine Proxy dead center on the map with a gold base behind it. Warp Prism now in production here for Classic. For Bunny back at home, he's playing a one base strategy up to this point. Very fast in tech, getting another tech lab, has a lot of Marines, has some Widow Mines. That tech lab possibly for a Raven. We'll have to see if he switches add-ons. Actually for Thor, so this is a wild Whoa, game, Tasteless. Man. This is so weird. Now, is he just going to get killed by DTs because he has no detection? I think he will be. <laughs> yeah, he has the armory. I missed that on the production tab. I was so caught up with what Classic was doing. Yeah, no, it's the same. Honestly, I was really starting to just watch this from the Protoss' perspective. And there's only one orbital because this is the one CC opening, and he does have a scan banked, but it's only one scan. Armory at home does not allow you to build missile turrets, and this Widow Mine drop, although it's doing a lot, What's the answer going to be? Lift it up. It's lifted. Go, That's going to get go, away. Go, 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 And there is nothing left. There's nothing else to see this. He has to wait until he has 50 energy again. This might just be it. Well, he's got to make sure he doesn't lose the Warp Prism, which he... I think the Thor could actually just pin it over here. Oh, yeah, with the Medivac as well. That's a nice play here by Bunny. I mean, Classic, now that he can recognize the situation, would absolutely love to warp in even one more oh. ET here. Yeah, there's one over here on the left. Oh, yeah, it goes through the depot wall. It. No, I would say I was on the same page as you. I'm like, where is the uh, uh, other DT? So uh, he's going to have a scan in three seconds. Yeah, but there's another another Dark Templar coming in. Yeah. Raven only halfway down. 11 SCVs already down. This scan will catch one DT. He finds oh. one, but, you know, you just back away. All you have to do is shimmy <laughs> out of range of that. I think we're about to see this game just fizzle out. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised oh, if Bunny Raven. went for a Hail Mary play as finally gets cleaned up. But 11 SCBs on 11 SCBs on one base here. What an insane game. Yeah. Now, Keep in mind, there is an armory out for Bunny, so Classic cannot actually kill these Widow Mines until he gets detection. Now, there is a possibility he could try to really do some damage here by pushing out with this army. But if he loses the army, I think he's going to be kaput. Um, Blink is 10 seconds out. Oh, the, oh Raven. the Raven! Oh, the oh, Raven's gonna go down! All right, the DTs are gonna be warped in here. Oh, no, sorry, Zealots. Yeah, the, the gas isn't just I guess it doesn't yet. really matter, yeah. yeah. I think you could probably fight this just as is. Yeah, it would be close, but without SCVs to repair, you gotta think, and yeah, that's gonna be it. Man, what a wild what game a number game. one between Classic and Bunny. That was so much fun. That was actually <laughs> one of my favorite games of the year. That was just such a weird <laughs> opening on both sides. And by the way, hiding the tech like right in plain sight, like right in the mill exact middle of the map. Um, now, Classic, it's also very interesting that he used that build against this player. 
because he knows he only has Terrence. And that build, by the way, takes a, a little bit of homework. That's yeah. not that's not one somebody says to you and you go, oh, I'll just try that on ladder. You have to like mess around with that and understand a couple features and ideas that are going to be a play and things you got to look out for. And, and, and things did go south for a second there. I mean, the, there was a, uh, a widow mine drop, right? I mean, that was not a, a cakewalk there for him. But what else does Classic have in store here? Because that's not a build you're going to be able to recycle in the tournament or in the group, most likely. I mean, PBT, it's a tough matchup for Protoss right now, but still one of the advantages of being in a group where all your opponents are Terran is you can actually get the time to cook up builds like this. So I can't wait to see what Classic has in store for us here on Ancient Cistern, man. Yeah. Yeah, let's get into this one, man. Classic with a 1-0 lead versus Bunny. Uh, let's see what happens in game two. Let's go. 2023 GSL Season 2. Twisted Minds, classic. A oh, wheezy announcer. I know his strat was crazy. He's like, Twisted Minds. <laughs> what are you, a Terran player? <laughs> okay, it's loss of this. <laughs> Mystery Gaming, Bunny. Just imagining how funny it would be if, like, it the is a Terran player. He's like, we have no idea what's gonna happen here. It's mystery gaming. Just imagining how funny it would. <laughs> imagine how funny it would be if, like, the players get to write like the title for their opponent after each game. It's That's just right. Like, <laughs> shameless cheeser. Our players would be like scumbag, brainless Protoss. <laughs> uh, all right, classic already with another uh, early yeah. probat on the map. You know. I was kind of fooled in game number one with the, the probe scout because I really did just think it was a probe scout and then, you know, maybe he's going to expand to the gold or hide yeah, like an sure. oracle. So now you're in game number two. This one, I guess, is finally heading into the natural expansion, but also getting heart palpitations watching this thing move across the map. Like, what's it going to be, you know? Oh, is he, he going to make a pile on there? No. <laughs> well, what about there? Nexus right away. Yeah. Now Standard opening. There is something to, you know, doing a strategy like that and then sending a probe out immediately. <laughs> kind of being like, what am I doing now? Um, but actually, this game's turned out to be pretty passive on both sides already, which is fine. Yeah, this is as bread and butter as it gets on both sides. Just a Reaper expand here for Bunny, fast expand here for Classic. And, um, you know, Classic, again, in Season 1 of GSL against Terra, and he was primarily going for Phoenixes, but you know, ESL Masters and also in a lot of other tournaments, he's been mixing it up a bit, going for, you know, some more Oracle play, some more Blink play. Not quite as predictable as he was. And certainly after that game one here in, in this group, you got to think now if you're Bunny that this is a Frost player that truly might be capable of anything. I mean, Classic yeah. has surely done his homework and it shows. It's got to be nice once you're done with your military service. And then you come back and you've reacclimated as a pro to then get right back to like doing all the weird, crazy stuff you were doing before, mm. you know? And all you have to worry about is the future. You know, you can completely focus on RTS as long as you want. Um, <clears throat> by the way, Twilight Council coming in here. So uh, it looks like at least, and again, we're, we're not deep into this game, but just to kind of go off of what happened in game one, it seems like, you know, Classic wanted to come in here and really kind of almost pull the rug out from under Bunny and then it, Go into more of a, of a normal play here in game two, and maybe even in game three. Um, and that's what it looks like at least so far. We'll see if there's any crazy surprises. But right now, this looks exactly like a lot of PVTs we've already seen. Yeah, would it be surprised to see him throw down another gateway and potentially a robo before throwing down the third, third nexus? But you know, with Classic, as crazy as he was in game number one, ooh, these adepts actually finding some good damage. They get a Marine and are able to completely disrupt the mineral line here. But you're not able to mine for a moment. With Shades, I think at least one of them should be able to get out. Nice control by Classic. Yep, so far so good here. It looks like he should be able to kill off that Adept. Um, and so Blink's coming along. We've got a Robo. Uh, and the third, and actually the fourth gas, I thought he was going to stick with three gases here. Yeah, four gases. So, so. Let, let's see how he techs up with that. Because yeah. a lot of times it's three and you kind of just play a, a reactive game. 
Yeah, that makes me think that it's going to be a later third Nexus coming out of Classic, and he's going to try and find his way into some tech here. Because, you know, for three great three gate blink, you really only need the three gases for you know, quite a duration of time because oftentimes you're building a Nexus, you're adding in additional gateways, then later, and those are all very mineral intensive things. That's where you want to have your economy focused. And Man, he so, didn't see anything with that scout. Yeah, Reaper getting shut down. Warp Prism also in production here for Classic. So even though it's only three gateways, this looks like it's going to be some heavy pressure. But, you know, that gas, it is piling up. It's going to be a Robo Bay. So, I mean, right now, Classic doesn't know what kind of game he's in. Obviously, it's not a crazy one here. We're going to have a third base made in a second, by the way. Um, and Protoss is just going to continue to tech up. And we've gone from, you know, pretty insane PVT on both sides in game one into a much more textbook PVT. Like, if you're going to teach somebody the matchup, you teach them this game, as far as what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, this is a very safe way of doing it. A little bit slower tempo on the expansions, but... Faster tech with a Colossus makes you safer against pushes that could can, can't come out. And this Raven coming through the main base with an auto turret able to pick off, I think, one pro. Auto turret should be able to focus down one, maybe two, if he's able to get the injured one. And Tasis, here comes the blinkets to the main. Now, he could end up getting the, uh, the stim. Oh, my goodness. He might actually get it. Oh, if only he knew. He would be focusing that down in a heartbeat. I feel like he does know, but I think he just feels better off Whoa. going for the tank and then the Marines here. Yeah, wow, more ambitious than I thought is Classic coming in, gets the Siege Tank, and now there's a lot of Marines also going down, but... Maybe it would not have been worth it to actually go for the... Um, oh, kind of a funny exchange. Mm. Probably not worth it to go for the Stim. I don't know. It's one of those moments you look at it, and it can be easy to call it one way, but I guess it's probably better to just get the other stuff he could get. He can also attack him later on when he warps in more Stalkers. I think um, if you know that it's Stim, you go for it, but it's either Stim or Combat Shields. Yeah, you don't want the 50% chance, because Stim Marines, even without Combat Shields, they're still scary. Right. So this um, Raven can just kind of park itself over there. There's been a pickup. I think because he's got the Raven over here, and this is a big distraction for the Stalkers, he thinks he can go northbound with the Medivacs and move out across the map. Yeah, I wonder if this Observer is going to be able to catch wind of it, because... Another blink into the main base could be able to find some damage here for Classic. There is what's, only that one siege. What's actually in his main? There's one siege tank, and now, you know, the rallied units out of the barracks. So not very much. Oh, this is so funny. There's just nothing here to repair this. Oh, this is actually so weird. Can he get on top of the tank or even go back around to the main? Drop now coming into the main base here. Classic. It, oh, no vision in this in corner the of the base. Spot. Ooh, this is this is gonna be nasty. How many pylons are actually covering that? Hold up! Oh, the Colossus is here. It's not back at home, so these Marines are gonna be completely uncontested. There's nothing that can handle them. He's gonna have to come back home with a recall if he wants to hold on against these uh, Marines. I think there is a Colossus out now, but with this many Marines, I mean, look at the pro count. It's just evaporating. Yeah, it is. But I think these infantry can actually be cleaned up. Is that gonna be the case back here? It is. Wow, this is a really really weird game here uh, yeah. both sides losing a lot of workers but the number of probes killed here for classic is nearly fatal yeah I, I think it has to be he's down to 19 workers right now and even though you're on three bases and you can chrono boost out more i mean the mineral income is just not going to be there for the next couple of minutes meanwhile bunny his economy basically uninterrupted at this point doubling in worker count on top of that he has mules and you got to think that at this point, Bunny's just going to push across the map and end things. I mean, if Classic was able to have the foresight or have the scouting to know to keep that Colossus back at home and deal with the Marines, maybe it's a different story, but... Well, hold on. He's going to be able to get this Colossus back inside the Warp Prism. I think the Marines can't get quite underneath it. Keep in mind that, you know, two Colossi, that's sometimes enough to sort of vaporize the, um, the infantry. It is a lot of Marauders, though. Maybe not. I mean, there's only six Stalkers and one Zealot on the ground truly to support them. The mineral income is just so weak right now for Classic. It's so many of those minerals so he's are gonna just go going back into probes, right? He's going to go for a counter. He's going to drop a Colossus and probably warp in units, but... He needs to buy time yeah. is basically what he has to do. So hopefully he'll be able to find some damage, force Bunny to at least send some reinforcements back. And, you know, to his credit, Bunny right now in the middle of the map is retreating. Yeah, and he is killing off some workers. I mean, you know, it's it's funny. This is one of the older techniques we saw early on in the days of uh, Wings of Liberty was the Colossus kind of harass. Um, it did buy a little bit of time, though. And, and has that been enough time to recuperate? Look at the workers. It's 40 to 41. Um, so the question now is, is 
can he absorb the blow? But I think Bunny is being really smart. He says, well, what if I just go ahead and get that extra percent up, send my workers, and, and you know, the only thing that, that could then counter this counter would be if Classic sent his probes, which I don't think is going to math out nicely. But there are three Colossi. It's a lot of splash. It's going to take some insane control from Classic to hold on to this one. There are also Vikings mixed in as well, and yep. this third base is all but forfeit. And here we go. SCV is now coming in, charging the front line. No disables on the Colossi. Shield battery overcharge does get pop, but the front line for Classic is almost non-existent. Excellent splitting here with the Colossi, but yeah, with it, no backbone to the army. It looked like it was going to be maybe okay, and then you go back and look at how much Terran has, and that's just... There's nothing you can do. GG, yeah. we're going to game three right now. Tied up one to one. I like that opening there from Classic, just getting caught completely unprepared for that yeah. 16 Marine drop at the main base and having no splash damage at home. I think at that point, he maybe still only had the three gateways as well. And I mean, you can't warp in three stalkers and start to deal with that, right? So the damage was just absolutely massive and Classic wasn't able to recover in time. Nice win by Bunny. Yeah, beautifully done. Um, well, they, I'm glad we got a game three here. And, and by the way, uh, you know, I, I wonder about that attack that we saw Classic do inside the main there. It seemed like he, he made his army a little bit squishier, uh, and that kind of created an opportunity for those medevacs to drop up in the main. That then really forced the game to just kind of end at that point in time. I think if it was just the Stalkers poking at the base of Bunny, everything is fine. You know, right. you have the one class back at home. Yes, you're going to take damage, but probably not game ending damage. But it's a game of limited information, right? You can't have all that intel to make the call. So Classic gets the worst end of that trade. And we're going to a map number three. Right, let's do it. Game three. Again, guys, the winner is going to be facing off against tomorrow here in Group A. This is season two at GSL Code S. Minds Classic. Mystery Gaming Bunny. Beautiful studio audience. It's so good to have a studio audience again. What a, what great news we had at the end of season one. To get yes. everybody back in here. It's so nice. It's starting to fill up too. It is. We get later in the day here. So we've got another probe out on the map. Yeah, similar builds to what we saw in uh, game number two. The question is, is this probe going to do anything, or is he just going to try to figure out if there's a, a quick expand or not? Yeah, it looks like he's just going to beeline to the base here at Bunny in. Get some scouting done. Might even be able to uh, deny Command Center's optimal positioning here on the low ground. In this case, I would throw it on a pylon if I'm classic, but we'll see if he opts to do that or not. So just going to opt to body block it here with this probe. And, oof. Would have loved to buy a little bit more time to delay that Command Center, but instead Bunny just barely able to eke it out. Yeah, pretty good um, immediate setup with the command center there. You're not getting any value with the probe out on the map if you can't delay that, so that's annoying. Yeah, when I, when I, whenever I'm playing PVT, I love to throw down a pylon and just like force them to plan it like one or two squares off and then cancel the pylon. Oh, yeah, it's like, you're yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. cancel your CC, right? Yeah, yeah, you lose force 100 to, minerals. Yeah, <laughs> force them to lift it up and then plan it back down. But um, I don't usually see top players do that very often. So I, guess, maybe. I guess the idea is like <laughs> you're supposed to be so good that you don't even have to waste the money on your pylon canceling, you know? Mm. Yeah, and Bunny actually throwing down a bunker here. The natural expansion does not want to get caught off guard the same way he did in the previous game to those two adepts where he lost a lot of mining time and also Marine. I mean, he was able to clean up those two adepts, but bunker here will we'll make that defense a lot more tight behind this classic throwing down a Twilight Council back at home. So still no Phoenix Colossus yet. No, nothing so far here. Um, and again, you know, he's in that unique position where he's got only one matchup to worry about. He only has to play uh, PVT. So, you know, 
And there's a lot of ways to approach that, but I think one of the better ways is to have, you know, kind of a core opening that branches into a bunch of different directions. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll see what exactly he's going to do with that. And, you know, he, he may be known for Phoenix Colossus. He may try to rotate that out in moments like this because, you know, the pros can research the same VODs we can, right? Like, he might think, okay, that's just not going to be strong in this moment. And not nice. bad. Yeah, nice catch. It's a lot of damage on those Marines, although behind this, there's no Adepts back at home, so this delayed Reaper coming into the main base, able to kill one Crow, might get a second one, and on top of that, a lot of scouting, some lost mining time as well with that Pro pull, so a little bit of tit for tat here. And I really thought that Bunker was going to be able to shut this down a little bit better than it has, but these two Adepts just so annoying. This time, Bunny not going for the Hellion opening, so. A little more challenging to try and push these Adepts away. Kind of a funny set of interactions here to start this off early on. Looks like we're going to have the three Widow Mine drop come in. Oh, with an Armory, too. Yeah. So, luckily for Classic back at home, he does have a Robo under production. Hopefully for him. The first unit out of that robo will be oh. an observer and oh, just barely out of vision of this medevac. That hurts. Yeah, it, it's funny. He's running in parallel with it. Uh, is the pylon going to see it? You know, the pylon doesn't have a lot of vision when it's warping. It's going to go right over it, so it should. Yeah, he's going to boost over it. Observer is in production, so detection will be here for Classic very soon as the Widow Mines now bur burrow. All three of them, in fact, burrowing here at the natural expansion. and. Yeah, even gets a Stalker there. Yeah, and gets I love kill. this for Bunny also, vacating the position because he saw the Robo. He knows this isn't the kind of build yeah. order win situation where you can get a ton of damage against, say, a Stargate or a Twilight Council that's delaying the Robo. And I don't blame him. I mean, especially after game one, he's like, well, maybe you just don't have, maybe you cut too many corners. Maybe I can win with that. But yeah, flying over the Robo was a good scout. So he got his damage and he caught back out. Templar Archives, also the tech here for Classic. I missed this. Very fast storm from Classic with a third base. This is something that I haven't seen in a while in PvP. Yeah, this is cool. This reminds me of some throwback, very early Legacy of the Void games in this matchup. It's funny you mentioned that because, yeah, it, it seems actually, actually like in both of the StarCraft, there's been experimentation with just getting Storm earlier against Terran. Personally, I, I think like, Storm first openings like this are the most fun to watch, to play, to yeah. cast. I love to see them, especially, you know, ferrying the... the Templar in with Warp Prisms. Ooh. As this drop comes in, Observer should be able to clean this up no problem. But especially for me as a Protoss player, it just it feels so fun. It feels so active. You're usually playing a much more aggressive style. Yeah. You know, with yeah. gateway units, you have a lot more Zealots, a lot more Stalkers. You're not relying on kind of death balling with either Colossi or Disruptors. And but. normally you get the Storm a little bit later on. Like yeah. Storm is a must, but normally you'll have like... Um, uh, Let's so say the Colossus damage or something else mm -hmm. that's going to be out there that pairs with it. And you kind of combo that splash damage in there until you can just obliterate what Terran has. Uh, we got two medevacs headed northbound uh, and soon to be over here uh, on the west. But are they going to get intercepted with these two Stalkers? They should be. More Stalkers are warping in because Classic would really like to catch this. He's been building nothing but Stalkers ever since he saw these two medevacs at the natural expansion of Bunny, but... Bunny wasn't being that vigilant before about stray pylons, so, I mean, there's also a chance he just stims through here. He actually sees this with the Observer, so, like, he could just get right underneath this and, like, insta-kill this. Yeah. The terrain's oh! a little bit tough. Link comes in, should get one medevac. Class is going to try and chase down the second one, but that's already 10 supply down there for Bunny. Nice catch by Classic. It's, it's, as, it's as good as it gets. Sniping a medevac like that. I mean, it's so much value. You don't even lose shields, man. Uh, and so the, you know, Bunny's not wavering. He's committed. He is continuing to just go right under observers. I mean, at this point in time, Classic could just as easily have map hacks on. He could just be cheating and see what's happening. He is going to get that kill on there. But, you know, when you have Blink Stalker and you see their army moving, you're not really worried. Yeah, Classic has a very good idea, especially, you know, with, with, a, with a medevac and eight bio units out of yeah. the field, too. And you're going Storm like this with six Templar. Yeah. It's going to be feeling really good for Classic. One good engagement here could be sending him to the winner's match against Maru. War Prism coming in from the side. Big Storm drops on all the bio. A lot of Marines going down as Classic gets the jump on Bunny's army. And, um, I mean, this is a very, very good moment here for Classic. He's on the move. And 
You know, Storm is hard to deal with when you attack into a Protoss, but try defending when they're storming you. You don't have a lot of room to move around in. These Templar on the ground have two Storm apiece as well. Keep in mind, there are also Templar in the Warp Prism, ready to go. Ghost production has just now started. Classic now pivoting into Colossus production. One Robo and a Robo Bay already underway, but I think the real story is how Bunny's going to be able to survive this. Keep in mind, SCV pulls not really viable against Storm, and he's going to try and retreat to the natural expansion behind these Widow Mines. So he's going to come in now. Uh, Marauder's going to come out and... You know, not a great storm, honestly. Not that he shouldn't have stormed that at all, but, you know, that's not what you're looking for is to kind of bruise the Marauders. Two ghosts now on the field. And Terran's going to try to shove back out and take his own third base. He needs to because Protoss is actually going up to a fourth. Yeah, Protoss behind this has been expanding very rapidly, and now two Robo Colossus production underway. Second Forge being added as well. Photon Cannons are getting added. I'm expecting into the expansions on the side to kind of thwart any widow mine drops any cloak widow mine drops that might come in and classic again with really great observer control just keeping tabs on this terran army now there are ghosts on the field so before thermal lance is done this is a precarious position for classic but oh those widow mines oh right, no, the wow. widow mines, excuse me the templar really get the storms they do a lot of damage nothing killed so the medivacs will be able to heal them back up there's not a lot of aoe back on the ground right now tasteless yeah, I mean, can uh, Buddy keep trying to hack and slash his way through here? Colossi are now on the field. No thermal lands yet still, so got to be very careful with those. Does Classic, it looks like he is able to shoo away the Terran as these forces kind of get segmented on both the north and the south, and a nice catching storm. Getting some extra damage there on these medevacs and retreating bio. Classic trying to get as much value Ooh. as he can out of this chase. And any air units you kill here, is money in the bag because Bunny right now, he needs an answer to the Colossi. He needs to start making Vikings. He's already started Viking production, but after that fight, the medevac count now, it's down to three. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a huge moment. Uh, very much so, Classic is in control of this game, and it's getting, getting hard for Bunny. It looks like he wants to try to move out again. Oh, no. Well, this is funny. Oh, no, it's dead. <laughs> That is hilarious. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, Bunny needed a moment like that. He got it. Yeah. Not every day you get to see just three Widow Mines kill off a Colossus. I mean, three Colossus and four Colossus, it's a pretty significant difference, you know, with the units on the field. So it doesn't seem like there's enough medevacs with the army to really heal this up. He's been roaming for a while, and everything is still pretty low on HP. Yeah, and I think that's why Bunny was, or Bunny Classic, excuse me, was so adamant of chasing that army. And actually, hold that thought as we have another engagement here. Oh, looks like just not enough energy on those Templars to come through with the Clutch Storms, but still Classic able to pick off a lot of units because this army is mostly Archon and Colossus here. But Stalker's also chasing down the air units, and man, I feel like Classic has this game. Yeah, this is, I think, almost over. I think what we're seeing Classic do is basically be cautious. He doesn't want to overextend. But this third base, there's really nothing to protect it. I mean, all that Protoss has to do is run in and attack it, and I think everything that Terran has falls apart. In fact, I think this game is basically ended now. Wow. The SCVs are gonna be wiped, and that's it, GG. Classic goes up against Maru in the, in the uh, excuse me, third best of three in Group A. That was a beautiful PVT game out of Classic, man. That's an old style. That is something that, you know, back when I used to play full time, I would try to play like this, where you open up with Storm, you eventually add in Colossus, and then you're going for this really high octane aggression. And the way that Classic was able to expand rapidly behind it, control the army positioning on the map, keep tempo with the Terran player, not only just by keeping tabs with the observers, but also by meeting the Terran when the Terran was unprepared for fights multiple times in the middle of the map and then not letting Terran retreat with all their air units. There are moments, as you pointed out, where I mean, so many units got taken out and oh, just a beautiful game there from Classic. Short break, guys. Marvelous Classic classic. coming up next to decide who goes on to the round of eight. Classic. We'll be right back. Classic. Hey, you heard that? Classic. 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 If I drop any day, it's a classic. Any move that I make, it's a classic. Hey, you heard that? Classic. Only do classics. I spit fire through the matches. You can call me Mr. Fantastic. I'll be hitting all the spots like that's it. Hey, that's the motive. Rocket 23, that's golden. Your girl spinning my vinyl, that thing golden. That's the memory of it that she holding. 
flashing lies. All these things come to me, dressed in prize. All my rings got weight to me. You feel that? You feel that? Already it's a classic, classic. If I drop any day, it's a classic. Any wave that I'm on, it's a classic. And you heard that? Classic, classic, classic. If I drop any day, it's a classic. Any move that I make, it's a classic. And you heard that? Classic. I'm on top, yeah, I'm on the move. Watch your step when I'm coming through. Next big thing, and I'm on the move. Best watch your step when I'm coming through. I'm on top, yeah, I'm on the move. Watch your step when I'm coming through. Next big thing, and I'm on the move. Best watch your step when I'm coming through. Classic, classic. If I drop any day, it's a classic. Any wave that I'm on, it's a classic. And you heard that? Classic, classic, classic. If I drop any day, it's a classic. Any move that I make, it's a classic. And you heard that? Classic.
우주급 텐션 최고의 토킹 핫식스 토킹 똑같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야 제로처럼 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자 실성 사이다 제로 여름이 왔다 마음껏 청량하자 청량한 순간에 언제나 실성 사이다 우주급 텐션 최고의 토킹 핫식스 토킹 연습 때는 되게 자신 있었거든요 근데 방의 컨디션 조절을 좀잘 못했어가지고 그 대회는 제 대회가 아니었던 것 같아요 아쉽죠 <웃음> 3대2로 져가지고 올라갔으면 더 잘했을 것 같거든요 월드 대회에서 8강을 가게 돼가지고 너무 좋았고 뭔가 할수 있다는 마음가짐이 생긴 것 같아요 저한테는 굉장히 좋은 결과였던 것 같아요 결승을 꼭 가려고 노력을 했는데 더 잘할 수 있었는데 형주한테 허무하게 저는 져가지고 좀 아쉬웠어요 제가 군대 복귀하고 나서는 항상 예선만 통과하고 방송 경기에서는 바로 탈락을 했었는데 8강까지 가가지고 제 개인적으로는 만족했던 결과였던 것 같아요 네 만족합니다 테란 강세인 것도 되게 인상적이었고 근데 그것보다 사실 이신영 선수하고 김대엽 선수가 예선을 뚫고 저는 못 뚫는 바람에 그것 때문에 좀 마음의 상처가 좀 있었죠 안 나올 것 같아요 다른 종목 선수들이 더 열심히 하지 않을까 지난 시즌이랑 달라진 게 없어가지고 나올 수도 있는데 지난번처럼 바람이 되는 거니까 <웃음> 나왔으면 좋겠네요 테란전이 좀 힘든 거 같기도 해요 지금 3테란전이 걸려가지고 굉장히 불쾌하네요 지금 어, 태양이 형 MMR을 알거든요 근데 뚫은 게 신기할 MMR인데 그래도 태양이 형이니까 방심도 쉬어가면서 원래 또 폐간 수련을 했는데 선수들의 성향 자체는 2년 전하고 크게 달라지지 않아서 약간 그 맞춤 빌드 형식으로 준비를 했는데 그게 잘 먹혀서 올라왔던 것 같아요 태양이 형한테 제가 GSL 예선에서 져가지고 저는 이제 최근 스타일을 좀 모를 줄 알았는데 준비를 잘 해왔더라고요 스스로 하면 안질것 같거든요 제가 근데 테테라서 이제 경쟁한테 지고 나서 자신감이 좀 떨어져가지고 오전이랑 포스전이 더 편해가지고 테란이 좀 많아가지고 좀 아쉬운데 충분히 2등 안에 들을 수도 있을 것 같아가지고 그냥 괜찮았던 것 같아요 멤버가 힘들겠다 생각은 들긴 하는데 목표는 16강이긴 했었거든요 오히려 조성주 선수랑 특별기에서 마음이 좀 편한? 그리고 저도 잃을 게 없는 너무 강력한 상대라서 인형 같으면 그냥 아, 조금 떨어지겠다 약간 그런 마음가짐이 있을 것 같은데 저도 실력이 많이 올라왔기 때문에 준비 잘하면 충분히 이길 수 있겠다는 라 자신감이 생긴 것 같아요 형들 너무 많이 만나는 거 아니에요? 저도 그렇게 생각했거든요 또 막상 해봐야 하는 거예요 지난 시즌 제가 다강 갔는데도 하나도 안 기쁘고 아쉽기만 하더라고요 그 아쉬움을 좀 이번에는 안 느끼고 싶은데 더 열심히 해가지고 잘하겠습니다 테란주에 걸리긴 했지만 또 옛날에는 테란을 잘 잡았거든요 옛날 기억을 되살려서 준비를 잘 세우면 그래도 이길 수 있지 않을까 싶어서 테란주를 좀 돌도록 하겠습니다 솔직히 시즌2보다는 시즌3 잘하고 싶어가지고 한우 형이 우승했습니다 제가 한 2년 만에 이렇게 오프라인 경기 출전하게 되는데 뭔가 신인의 마음이거든요 선수들이 강력해 보이고 당연히 떨어질 것 같고 그래도 좀 최선을 다해가지고 많이 노력했다는 모습을 보여주고 싶습니다 라운드 16 그룹 A 멍 T1 클래식 버니 Welcome back, everybody. GSL Codex returns now with the <laughs> choking. Sorry, with the winner's <laughs> match. It's I'm the first guy to just die mid sentence. I'm like, we're. <laughs>
Um, we're here with the uh, winner's match of Group A. It is going to be a PBT. Now, obviously, Maru, he's kind of the favorite for the whole tournament. Um, but the reality is that Classic's looking really good. He had a great game against Bunny. It would be exciting to see uh, him pull this off. And we don't know exactly what he's got planned here for Maru in this PBT. Yeah, Classic looked phenomenal in that series. I mean, game two, it was a little bit shaky. But in game one and game three, coming out with some crazy builds in game one. And then in game three, just doing really clever play and it was so solid too from start to finish i mean going for templar first opening and just controlling the map expanding at a rapid pace and really just completely dictating the flow if you think back at the all the pvts that we saw which I, admittedly was not many because the protoss just lost so quickly yeah, we didn't have many protoss <laughs> in the last it? season yeah it was always it felt like Terran just kind of setting the pace of the game setting the tone of the game and protoss had to survive effectively sure. but classic with that opening just had a perfect read on exactly what to do when to do it and from start to finish it just felt like he was in complete control and it was so refreshing to watch and <laughs> i miss this by the way doing the hot six promo <laughs> over there <laughs> um so uh, looking at ty and how he's played so far he he looks good but i'm worried he's not in shape to be in the round of of eight and with the fact that already we've had classic beat Bunny, it is looking like even if Classic can't win here, he may be the guy that will advance second. Now, that's exciting when you consider the fact that Protoss barely existed in Season 1, so we kind of want to see some more Protosses do well here in Season 2. Yeah, but for TY, it's tough to gauge exactly where he's at because he hasn't played a lot of televised matches, right? And even qualifying for GSL Code S this season, he beat Classic 2-0 in the qualifiers. And so, of course, that's a tournament where you don't have as much time to prepare for each opponent. It's more like a Know, a bracket that you play through like a weekend tournament, but you know he beat Armani, he beat Scarlet, he beat Classic to get here for Code S. So at least for Ty, should we go to a match where Classic and Ty have to play each other to advance? Maybe Ty has a chance of making it, but with the Classic that we're seeing so far today, who knows, man? Maybe he could take on Maru. I would love to see that. That would be really exciting. Uh, we're going to start this out on Royal Blood. Uh, Classic already showing a very big range of play. And you have to imagine, whatever the best PVT he has in store for us, it's going to be here against Morrow. So I'm very curious what he's got planned here. Morrow, he's Morrow. He's always looking very on top of it. This should be an exciting match. It should be very good. And especially seeing the builds that Classic cooked up in that first series, you got to know that he has more tricks up his sleeve here. So you go to map number one, Classic versus Morrow in the winner's match of Group A. Minds Classic. On side gaming, Maru. I'm super excited for this game. We've got a probe out, by the way, again. Now, most of the games, the probe uh, did not actually make anything in the middle of the map. Uh, but, you know, let's see what he's got in store for us here this time around. Yeah, but this was the map where it did, <laughs> yeah. you know, so we, we have to see exactly what the plan's going to be. Fans from the USA, good luck with your game. Welcome, everybody. So good to have you with us. So good to have you guys Absolutely here. Absolutely love having an audience back here at the GSL. Totally I know, different my vibe. mood is so elevated. I was a bit of a doomer day one of season one. It, it, it I don't was know a if downer. it was obvious. We, kind of kept, we came in here and the, the studio was empty and we were like, Whoa. Then we, we turn on the we turn on the screens for the first time and we see like the theme of the season is chains. chains it's like yeah, no, yes. it's because GSL is in jail. Um, All right, so yeah. we have a proxy gate coming out here, Tasteless. Yeah, this is cool, and um, it's the second proxy gate. So there's not second proxy, but one in the main base, one proxy out on the map. And if this goes unscouted here by Maru, as he is now going for the low ground scout, potentially checking that gold base. Yeah, and remember that this this is a, a kind of build, almost like a, a, a meal. It like pairs with what <laughs> happened earlier on. It. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, are you going to make a nexus here? Now, we've seen this build a lot. Um, this is a very good way oh to, to bully the low ground uh, for the Terran and kind of take control early on because you get a lot of momentum by having that second gate in the middle of the map. 
Can you imagine if class just expands to the other gold base? Because almost almost always you expand vertically to the gold base yeah, on this yeah. map as Protoss, but what if he just goes horizontal? That would be sick, actually, if he did. Uh, like by the, the way, it is down here. <laughs> and there's an SCV that's being hidden on the far left. Is he going to make something down here? Like a starport, maybe? Factory finished up, and yeah, starport okay. is going down. Very cool. That no. being said, you know, the, the, the proxy gate activates a little bit quicker here. Yeah, also, notably, there is not room for an add-on in the starport right now, so probably going to be, I, I would think, a Liberator or a Medivac for a push, but yeah, it's going to be gold base here oh horizontally by Classic. And also, this proxy Stalker hitting so fast right now. That's, what, five, up, six, seven SCVs? Here, I'm getting my lotto numbers from State. I can't believe you <laughs> actually called that. Oh, two Marines already go down as well. This Widowmind will put a damper on this a bit. Unless Classic's able to pick it off or have some sick dodge or the Adept, I think he might try and go for it. He's going to try and thread the needle here, see exactly where that beam is. And yeah, oh, with a annoying. shade, he's yeah, able to get the vision. He's going to try. He's going to try and do it a little bit too fast there. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a kind of a haunting moment. These little micro moments could have completely changed the way the game was going had he actually faded that out. It's so difficult to do that correctly, though. It's one of the finer things that you have to really map out in your head, right, with these things. Because if it goes wrong, I mean, you just suddenly lose all your vision up the ramp. Yeah, you can't do anything. Oh, there's a Stargate Star proxy eight? here, too. And it's actually going to be... I was wrong, excuse me. I thought the Starport was further down, but it no, will I, be a tech I lab think, and a Banshee. I think you were right. I think you had to move it. I oh, thought the same I thing. Right? I, I thought there's no way he can get an add on there. Um, Looks like he has an extra probe in gas. It's not the end of the world. But he's rallying later. all those probes to gas, and I, I think it's for this recall. And I think now he's going to pull them onto uh, minerals. Oh, yeah. good call. Yeah. This is one of the best parts about doing this build here as Protoss also, is that you don't need to build your SCVs or your drones from that hatchery or have this right. long transfer. You recall, and then instantly they're there. And Yeah, I mean, not having to have the, the lost mining time of the transit of the workers going from there across the map is really nice as well. Now, this is Cloak Banshee, and Phoenix is all right on the map without an Oracle, so there's a lot of potential for damage to be found here by Maru, which is concerning here for Classic. But again, having that gold base, I think Classic can afford to lose a couple of probes in the main and still be relatively even, because I don't even think Maru has a, has a scout on that just yet. The Reaper now coming into the main base means so, that Maru mean, will know. Yeah, you're going to see that there's <laughs> nothing there. You're like, damn, one gateway play still. <laughs> so, yeah, he's so right now. Yeah, immediately Maru goes, okay, we got to get on the map and figure out what's going on. He's Still one CC for Maru, by the way. So this is going to be a heavily committed push. Yeah, anything he can clip off here, Classic Ken, is going to be good. Like that one Marine, that's actually pretty big. Okay. A scan here, he sees the target. Wow. Meanwhile, Classic expanding to the gold base. On the top left side as well, setting up a container on the main base. And Maru is actually happy for this to happen because that means these Phoenixes are not back at home trying to intercept the Cloak Banshee coming in. And while these siege tanks will fall, the Banshee starting to rack up the kills back at home. That was an odd little back and forth. Yeah. He was like lifting the tank up and sniping it when he should have been sniping the tank that wasn't lifted up and killing that. He, 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 I think that actually Classic could have won that fight. If, if we could like go back and watch that in slow-mo, it was like a really weird moment where it's like, um, now, I mean, that being said, he Mono might still lose his game, right? He doesn't have any tanks for the time being, but that was kind of a funny moment. Yeah, it was an awkward one in, for sure. And now with this Cloak Banshee here at the gold base, second expansion here for Classic. The Oracle will be able to clean this up, but there are three Banshees already on the field and a fourth one also in production. So all these probes are just running around the map. 20 of them in total have gone down. Now the Oracle, it's very limited with these revelations, right? You have to fly it all the way around to these very different locations to try and you know, grasp control of the situation. And although that fight did not go as well for Classic as it could have, he can still kill those tanks, but the worker count's now 26 to 22 in Maru's favor. Yeah, Maru's ahead, but a gold base makes all the difference in the world. Um, he's still making tanks one by one. Oh my god, can he get this Banshee? Yeah, I yeah, can't that, cloak that, either. That's a nice catch. And there's another one coming down, but when you have Phoenixes out, you could just scoop up the, the tank and, and assassinate it. I mean, it, it's a very easy way to approach the game. He's going to go for the battery now. Yeah, we'll make it easier for him to pick off these probes. Now they have to vacate the vicinity. Stalker is getting warped in. I would love for... Classic just make one more Oracle to try and get, you know, the situation 
firmly under control as there is still one more Banshee on the map. It is here by the Starport. Another one actually in production. So, you know, for Maru right now on one base still, keep in mind, he really has to keep this damage coming because as you said, the gold bases, they do make the difference. It is 25 workers for Classic to the 27 of Maru, but the mineral income, even with mules, should be relatively close. Okay, now. Three tanks out, three Phoenixes if he needs I'm to. I'm surprised. Here we go. I am surprised Classic yeah. went for that fight there. That was a ton was, of Marines. The Marines alone right. were enough of a threat. Another miscalculation, another moment where he miscontrols a little bit here. Yeah, and the real threat now for Classic uh, is that his army does not scale well over time, whereas Maru's absolutely does with combat shields, with eventually Stim. But it's still one base. Yeah, actually, no tech labs on these barracks so either. Like, so it, it, it's a very, it's a real slow drip of units coming out for Terran. It's scary, and every time we see Classic mismanage a fight, it gets even scarier. But yeah, hold if, on. Can can he just evacuate the probes? He, he kind of buy be, time. I mean, he could kind of. He's he's got three different spots on the map, right? He should be recalling these out. Oh my God, a counter. Yeah, recall up here to this gold base. <laughs> There's a Banshee waiting for them, though, as even more probes go down. But I actually didn't catch until now that Maru doesn't have any tack labs on any barracks. So there's no right. stem, there's no combat shields underway. But still, 30 Marines on the field. This is a ton. Wow, look at that. He kills the Nexus and just goes immediately to the next spot. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna, gonna go to try. Main. He's gonna try to decapitate him. He's gonna go right in here, like a stake into the heart. <laughs> he's gonna try to just kill Classic uh, and hit him where it hurts most. Because from there, he could just sit back and, and, and produce, right? He's going to be able to kill this Nexus and all the infrastructure unless Classic has an answer right here, right now. Yeah, but with only 31 army supply, I don't think he is going to have an answer, Tasteless. These gateways firmly unpowered, so the production all but non-existent here for Classic. And finally, he's going to be able to clean up this Banshee here on the top side. But the standing army for Classic just does not have a chance against 36 Marines and four siege tanks of Maru. The main Nexus will fall. And after an absolutely crazy map number one, with Maru still on one base at 10 minutes and Classic expanding to both golds, I think Terran's gonna get the better end of this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you can see Protoss wants to try to come in here for a, a trade, and maybe they can get a little bit of that off here. I'm not I'm surprised he's not pulling SCVs, but it looks like Maru has the map better than me. He says he can get this exactly. GG, what an interesting game. Yeah, By the, the way, I really thought Classic had that earlier on. It did look like it, but the Banshees just completely gave him the runaround. There was a Banshee to the main base yeah. in the gold base on the bottom right side and the gold base at the top left side. There was no safe place for the probes to be at all. And with only one Oracle made over the duration of that game, I mean, it was just like whack-a-mole because the Starport, I don't even know if it got scouted. It just kept pumping out these Banshees for the longest period of time. And Classic just kept having to put out these fires and eventually, he ran out of steam. I mean, if he was able to just mine the bases that he had for even one more minute, then suddenly it's a different game where he's able to get, you know, two or three more rounds of Warpins out yeah. and completely stop Maru's army from snowballing. But instead, Maru just, with fantastic harassment off of one base, able to power through. And I think Classic tripped up a little bit when he engaged with the tanks earlier. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a second. We're going to go right into this game, guys. Game two, Morrow up with a 1-0 to lead. Season two. Twisted Minds. Classic. Side gaming, Maru. So yeah, I mean the, the, the fights that uh, we saw Classic take. If we could go back in that first game, it was a weird moment. Like when you pick up a tank with the Phoenix, the tank can't attack, right? Right. But I think the way that you want to distribute the damage, if there's two tanks and you have Phoenixes. Uh, picking up one, you want to target the tank that's on the ground with the stalkers, or pick up both of them, right? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, 
So what happened was is he he would pick up the tank that was uh, disabled and fire at that, and that allowed an extra volley off, which, you know, that might seem inconsequential, but when you have a Terran on one base, who the only way he's going to win that is to power across the entire map and, and take it, that's a real micro error. Mm. And we actually saw that even before when he missed micro the Adept against the, um, the Widow Mine. There were moments where, like, Classic could have created an advantage if he could execute his unit control better. And he, he failed about two or three times back there. Yeah, and those mistakes, they do add up. Yeah. I would love to get a replay of that first engagement there yeah. in game one because I wasn't paying too much attention to the micro. I was more surprised that Classic went for the fight at all mm -hmm. because it felt like, at least from my perspective, he can't really afford to shut out Phoenixes in that situation. But Well, you, you might actually be... 100% right about that. Like, if he's on one base, why do you ever want to engage when you don't have to? Wait until the last second. That's why you have a gold base, right? Is you're trying to get the advantage. You're trying to build up the momentum. Yeah. Um, it is difficult, though, because, again, over over time, the Marine tank ball... Oh, by the way, this proxy is going to get scattered here by the Reaper for Maru. So, Classic's plan already going awry in this game. But just to touch back on that in game number one is, you know, if Terran is just building Marines and Siege tanks... That army is going to scale way better than your gateway army without charge, without blink, without any splash damage in sight. And so there is an incentive for you, even if Terran is on one base, to try to whittle down their army to a manageable size, even if the traits aren't the best for you. But it, it's a fine line you have to walk. It's very dangerous as a Protoss player because one bad engagement, as we saw there, can start to snowball in Terran's favor. And then suddenly you're on the back foot. You can't really take... Any good follow-up engagements there as Protoss and things start to fall apart. Yeah. By the way, Maro just really exhibiting uh, great instinct in that game. Like, that's a very weird game. You can see that was like part two of the weird build order from the, uh, the second best of three that we had from Classic earlier. Yeah. Right? Uh, where he's like, all right, this is the sequel to that build <laughs> that's even weirder. <laughs> And uh, Mara was able to actually handle it in a really tough spot. It's very hard if, if you're on one base and they did a cheese build and took a gold base to actually push out and win. If, if Maru wins this series in advance, I would love to see Classic play on Royal Blood again so we turn that sequel into a yeah, trilogy. That's because right. I, wa I want to see what other tricks he has up his sleeve on this map. Yeah, because he's got some very cool ideas that he's uh, tinkering with here. Yeah, Adepts get deflected without too much problem this time. These two adept openings here from Classic have been quite effective up until this point so far today. And the Oracle now coming into the natural expansion. A lot of Marines here will be able to shoo that away. And actually a Liberator in production here for Maru as well. And no follow-up Stargate units from Classic. So, um, we are just going to have, it looks like, Protoss back up for a little bit here. He's not going to commit anywhere. He's basically dialing into the uh, the same idea that we had uh, in the other classic game PVT, where he basically went for you know a very passive three base into stalkers with blink, uh, a couple phoenixes, you know, kind of reactive style play. Yeah, I think most games that we see from classic today, and frankly, probably most other Protoss players in this tournament PVT are going to kind of look a little bit more like this, where you know the way that you open up. The path that you take to getting to Blink Stalkers and Colossus at a third base is going to be different, but more often than not, you're going to try and end up exactly here and be able to stabilize on those three bases because only really truly then, unless you're doing some kind of crazy cheese like we saw on um, Royal Blood, are you able to truly start to play your game. Oh, this... I'll get scanned. Oh, he's going to see that. That's unfortunate. Uh, is he going to try to come towards here anyway? So let's be able to gun that down. Kind of a scary moment. Notice that there are five SCVs with this. Um, so he's very committed. He's basically trying to leverage the repair uh, to the point. And, you know, he can... Oh, he almost actually picks up that tank. Yeah, he can also lift. There's no shield battery ready. Actually, probes need to get pulled, and the Oracle falls as well. So Hold Classic up. and Dire straights right now as Siege Tank volleys, even hitting the probes. Ton of damage going down. Only three more Stalkers on the field. 20 probes already fallen, and I think... In the blink of an eye, Maru is going to be advancing from is that Group A. It? Yeah, I guess it is. I think it is, man. Man, you know, Maru has such a good handle 
on like what needs to be done in these very, very specific situations. By the way, that's going to be at the snowballing with a tank repair. Yeah, there was a liberator okay. in the main base behind that too. Oh, completely was Completely denying minerals, so. Well, Mar is firing all cylinders. I didn't really catch exactly the severity of the situation that Classic was in until it was all but too late. Yeah, I mean, he just has that calculus down. He's like, oh, the batteries are a little bit delayed, and I, I killed off one or two units earlier on. I actually just win this game mm -hmm. and comes out, and it's like, it's just too much. It's funny, too, even when the Immortal was out, I'm like, well, hold on. Can he kill the uh, Cyclone in the tank? No. No. Five SCVs is enough to repair that to where a tank will not die. Yeah, that Oracle opening and then going into it, their Nexus a little bit too greedy. It's tough. You got to take those risks as Predos in this matchup sometimes. Absolutely. You want to come out with a win. And um, we're going to have an interview now with Mara. Let's see how he's feeling. He is uh, moving on to the round of eight. No shockers there. Hungry for yet another GSL victory. Congratulations, Mara. He says thank you. Looks like you're set to make it to the quarterfinals. How are you feeling? Personally, I thought this group was very tough. I wasn't sure if I'd be advancing, so I'm very glad I managed to do so. Any match that stood out to you? Anything that was really difficult? Uh, game one against Classic was a very complicated match. It was a very unusual situation we were faced. I was faced with. You had a lot of different builds that were used here today. Yeah, I think they're talking about game one and the second best of three about it. Just kind of trying to take every little bit of advantage of his economy. <laughs> JYP said he gave you advice some earlier. Did that play any role uh, there for you earlier? And he says yes. So you face off against TY. You weren't sure you were going to face after that. What did you prepare for today? Uh, to, I, what I came in here thinking was I don't want to try to finish the games too early. I want to let the games pan out. You've shown a very dominant one-sided performance with TVT in the past, but recently it seems like it's been a little bit tougher for you. Can you tell us about that? Yes, that's true. Um, I think I've had some mental blocks with the matchup itself. <laughs> They're asking if he yeah, feels differently if he plays in domestic games or overseas games. He says, no, he doesn't feel a difference. He also mentioned, I think I'm okay at overseas games as well. Who do you think will make it to the quarterfinals from other groups? Any predictions? <laughs> I think Hero, did you catch the other one? Uh, Hero and... Or maybe Ragnarok has a chance to advance. Any words to the fans? I'm sorry I missed that other name, guys. It goes Beyond. Oh, Beyond, okay. I'm so excited to see fans, especially here in the studio. I hope you guys enjoyed the game today and enjoyed the season of GSL. Thank you very much. All right, they congratulate him once more. Oh, my phone. All right. My casting phone. <laughs> casting phone. Yeah. Um, a fun, fun group so far, man. Maru yeah. advancing in first place. That was a really good series against Classic. It was, it was actually uh, really interesting to see how Maru uh, dealt with that. Um, again, Classic with two gold bases on opposite sides of the map. Knew exactly how to thread that needle and close that out. He is unsurprisingly the first player who's going to move on to the round of eight. Is he going to gobble up another GSL victory? Could happen. Uh, and for now, we're going to have to see who's going to be that final survivor of Group A. we got a short break, and coming up next, we're going to eliminate our first player. Don't go away.
우주급 텐션 최고의 토킹 핫식스 토킹 똑같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야 제로처럼 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자 실성사이다 제로 여름이 왔다 마음껏 청량하자 청량한 순간에 언제나 실성사이다 우주급 텐션 최고의 토킹 핫식스 토킹 라운드 16 그룹 A 멍 T1 클래식 버니 아프리카 TV 프리컵 스튜디오 라이브 2023 GSL 시즌 2 Welcome back, everybody. It's time to eliminate the very first player for season two. It's going to come down to one of these two tearing at legends, T.Y. or Bunny. Yeah, T.Y. versus Bunny should be an interesting one. T.Y., you know, first Code S qualified. 
in quite a long time after military service. He's been looking good online in the qualifiers, mostly against Protoss players and against Zerg players. But as of yet in TBT, still kind of difficult to see where he stands, especially since his first set of the day was against Maru, of all people, right? And you know, Maru, it's hard for anyone to look good against him, so. It should yeah. be interesting to see how this one pans out. I mean, Bunny, he, he got top four in the last GSL as well. Let's keep that in yeah, mind. I mean, but Bunny is godlike. It's it's actually so funny because GSL's been around for so long. We've seen so many players play so well, and like all these guys are so good. I think Bunny is definitely the favorite, but TY knows how to prep for a best of three. I think TY could beat anybody in a best of three. I think he prepped very well for Morrow. Uh, unshockingly, Morrow did overpower him. I don't think that's a good measurement of where TY is. So I'm going to be looking at this from TY's perspective. I want to see what he's got planned, what ideas he's uh, going to be working with, and how exactly Bunny's going to respond. Neo Humanity will be our map for map one as we get into this best of three to decide who's knocked out first in season two of the GSL. Season two. Dome Freaks, T.Y. Mystery Gaming, Bunny. <laughs> T.Y. is brave, man. He is a brave gamer. First GSL Code S back. Just lost to Maru, now up against Bunny, top four of the previous Code S. Let's go Command Center first. <laughs> CC first, go, go. I like it. From, From Ansan. Ansan. Nicely. Love you, TY. Straight to the point. A lot of TY fans in the audience. Well, I mean, TY is, you know, first of all, I mean, if you're a, a fan of good gameplay, obviously you're a fan of TY. Fan of StarCraft too, fan of TY. But uh, I think the Korean fans especially love him. You know, he's he's... Such an articulate person. If you could ever get a chance to stand and talk to him, I know for a lot of these you know, players, you can never hear them speak English or anything like that. But he's a really smart guy to talk to. Um, and you know, they were really looking at him early on here in the in the tournament uh, in, the, in the whole. Um, I'm sorry, I'm totally distracted because there's a bunker being made right here. <laughs> uh, I'll park that thought. There are no Marines in map, by the way. Yeah, Reaper in production, but very far away, and no more SCVs being pulled. So this is just uh, Bunny trying to buy a little bit of idle time here from TY. He's trying to force him yeah. to pull SCVs because... He wants him to overreact to this, basically. Yeah. I mean, already this has pretty much paid for itself. I mean, Bunny, he's already sent out the scout, right? And There is a Reaper coming. Yeah, but the Marine popping out should shoo away the SCV. Well, not if it goes to the wrong spot. True. Well, it was actually a little bit dangerous now. I, I thought for sure he was going to go down to the bunker and try and kill it. He's really good with his control, too, here. The SCV's still alive. Wow. Oh, my God. It doesn't finish. <laughs> I can't believe it got that close, even. But, man, and that was the bad luck of where the SCV goes uh, yeah. when it's, when it's uh, building the structure. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I was looking at it. I'm like, OK, this is smart by Bunny. You're building this bunker. Your opponent has to pull two SCVs. They're losing mining time. The 25 minerals that you lose by canceling it is going to be. Oh, man, Oof. he's lost another. Almost lost a Marine, one Reaper to get taken down. But, you know, in, in terms of just the mats of it, that was a good trade for Bunny. Well, keep in just mind, I mean, this is a second command center that was rushed out, and it's not being used right now. Mm. Um, just to what I was saying earlier, I mean, the staff at GSL, they were really excited to try to push him into doing commentary because the guy's so smart and has such a, you know, he's, he's very eloquent and, and obviously very good at the game. Uh, so it's not shocking to see a huge fan base out here for that. Sorry, I just wanted to finish that thought before we got further along no, into no. this thing. That's worth talking about. TY is one of those gamers that just is so good at putting his mind to words. And when you could play at the level that he does, I mean, we're talking about a GSL champion, right? Just having them in the booth is such a boon to the Korean StarCraft II community that it's a no-brainer. There's so many fans here cheering him on in his first GSL Code S back in years. Uh, things are going to quiet down, at least for now. 
Um, but there's going to be another push. I'm sorry, I stand completely corrected. This just seems to be the way so many Terrans want to play this now, is to get that medevac with whatever you could put in it out and try to do some damage. And look, TY um, is going for a third command center right away here. And it's not in an exactly safe spot when you consider a siege tank is coming here. Mm -hmm. Siege tank is going to get dropped down. Hellions are here to intercept it. That SCV at least is going to get, get, get killed. The Banshee, luckily, is the tech of choice here for TY, so he is able to shoo all this away. And I think it was Maru, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, may, maybe it goes back further than that. But certainly in my mind, when I think of one medevac drop coming across the map and causing damage like this super early in the TVT, I think of Maru. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> you got to trade out that Marine. Make sure that tank can fit in there. He's still rallying units down. I think he wants to try and find a way to kill at least another SCV, right? And now the Cyclone here to shoot away the Banshee. You actually can Siege up here, but oh, maybe hold a little up, bit up. too oh. fast. A little bit too early with a Siege up there on that tank. And the yeah. last shot from the Banshee is able to take it out. And all the wind is out of the sails here of this push. Is I mean, that just kind of ends the whole rush, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the idea is that you have the tank that's going to shell that command center, and the command center becomes Instead of this really great investment, it becomes a real threat. Like, if you don't let it finish, uh, you're going to economically be in peril later on. But the fact that they both got traded out, uh, both the tank and the Banshee, means that things equalize quite nicely here for TY. Yeah, that trade definitely going in his favor. Bunny a little bit ambitious with that siege up on the low ground, but... He also was going third CC behind this, actually keeping up pace with TY after delaying it with that first drop, so... Not too behind economically is Bunny. His SCD production a little bit later because he didn't go CC first, but in terms of just raw command centers, and wow, TY already going for the double gas here. On the low ground, that's kind of crazy. He really wants to pump out of these two factories, but this isn't mech, I don't think. He has two engineering bases, if I'm not mistaken. A scan over here. Bunny's gonna get his third base up comfortably. He still seems to be confident that he can come out on the map. Uh, and make quite a bit happen. And I think rightfully so, TY decides to start to congest uh, the center of the map to make Bunny have to do a little bit more legwork to get anywhere that he wants to be. Um, we're going to have a full-on engage. You know, Artos has always had this joke about this. When you see two guys meeting in the middle of the map, it's like, okay, one of you's wrong. Like, right. <laughs> you're, not both <laughs> you're not supposed to both just, like, have it out in the middle of the map like this. Like, that can't be right. Somebody's got to have... An advantage here, especially with different build orders. I knew exactly where you're going with that too. It often yeah. does feel that way, but here for Bunny, he just wants to leverage pressure, and for Ty, he wants to not let that pressure reach his third base. He wants yeah. to try and create a little bit of a buffer. And Armory now coming in for Ty. I might have been completely wrong about those two engineering bays. Maybe I read the production tabs wrong. Ty might be going mech again in TBT. Yeah, double and double Armory. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of his. Uh, what he's cooked up for the matchup right now uh, and how he wants to try to handle it in long games. Now, I don't know if Bunny's playstyle is going to let him have that kind of uh, razor-sharp ability to cut through the tech right in the middle of it, but we'll see. Oh, no. T.Y. massively out of position here, losing with one siege tank here out of the natural. Oh, Auto my turrets God. coming down, and a disable. We'll get two, maybe even three siege tanks as suddenly this natural expansion and third base are sectioned off from each other. Now, T.Y. does have air superiority with a higher Viking count, but a lot of damage already done. He really needs to clean this up. Luckily, able to get both of those siege tanks out of vision from Bunny, pulling some SCVs just to soften the oh, blow here. Oh, my God. The command center is going to narrowly survive. I love watching Vikings chase each other by jumping and then <laughs> landing and then picking back up. Yeah, T.Y. was eventually able to clean that up and reset the tank counts, but that was a scary moment there for quite some time. I thought Bunny, if he had reinforcements coming in, could really cause some problems there for T.Y., but... Well, you know, he's relentless. I mean, he's just continuing to try to probe around and see if he can't find a yet another opening here. Uh, it is uh, worth pointing out they're both still expanding at about the same rate, so very different games, but growth seems to be almost identical. And if we think back to the Achilles heel of TY when he tried to play mech against Maru, it was the relentless drops that Maru came in because there weren't turrets in position, there weren't Vikings out for the longest time to shoo those away and kind of control the airspace around TY's base. But this game, oh. it seems like he's learned from it. 11 Vikings on the field. 
Happy Steve Shanks should be able to zone out Bunny from getting any extra damage in on this fourth command center. But comparing this game to where TY was at against Maru in that earlier series, I'm liking TY's position here a lot more. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know that he's going to be able to cut through the same way that Maru did to what you were talking about earlier, State. Um, but I do think he's doing a pretty good job of keeping the pressure on. But really what we're going to see here is probably uh, TY on the defending side for like four to five more minutes while he continues to develop. I thought that maybe Bunny was going to find an opportunity um, to, to shut this command center down, but he did not get that. Yeah, and Bunny actually going for a very fast battle cruiser switch as opposed to what we saw from Maru, which was waiting for TY to max out on effectively the wrong composition. Now this scan does miss it. I actually don't know where the fusion core is exactly. Yeah, where is that? Oh, it's here oh, in the natural there. expansion. Okay. And, oh, it's Liberator range coming out first. So maybe no BCs. If Bunny is able to get air control, then suddenly with Liberator range, he might start to threaten these exterior bases here for TY. You know, the fourth base that he has right now, around the three o'clock position, potentially a fifth base later at the six o'clock position, could be under threat. 1-1 um, one, one for vehicles is gonna finish up here for TY. As he's gonna continue to develop. I think he scanned that. I don't think he's gonna see the Liberators come out. No, and also he saw the extra starports, but there's no tech labs on them and they are producing, yeah. so he doesn't he, he shouldn't know. suspect that battle cruisers are coming out. Yeah, you, you, you might expect battle cruisers to be an inevitability, or at least you should, especially after that last game. But knowing, you know, the rate in which they're going to come out is actually what's more important, I think here. Yeah, and I think he has a pretty good read on the situation and knows that air superiority is going to be what tells the tale here in this match because TY immediately after scanning the additional starports there for Bunny, even without the tech labs on them, threw down two starports of his own and additional missile turrets. So. He's getting ready to hold on, but his army composition on paper does look a little bit better. It's just the air superiority here for Bunny that's scary. Um, well, I mean, he's basically zoned him out. I don't feel like Bunny's going to have any headway there. Is he going to try to land these Vikings? Oh, it's I the Liberator range. Yeah. Liberator range. As long as Bunny has air superiority, he can just completely shove away these siege tanks. And now suddenly this base at 3 o'clock but he can get enraged, that one's gonna go down. So what exactly is TY gonna do here? Because this is very winning right now to just be selling this. It looks like TY is gonna try to go around, but this seems like a pretty high risk, high reward move. I think it's because he's maxed. He needs to trade out some of these units to try and regain air control and repop on more Vikings. But unfortunately for him, it seems like he might not be able to get too much value out of that. Although this move did buy him time. It forced Bunny to retreat from that third base. And now that Planetary no longer getting shelled, and TY has some Liberators of his own. Oh, big engagement coming in. Armor shredding missile on TY's Vikings, but does he have more? Yeah, I think that TY has a little bit of, a, of an edge here. Yeah, it looks like wow. he's going to be able to drive him back. Uh, a, a great way to kind of take back the lead here. Um, 12 o'clock, by the way, is you know, being grown into by Buddy. He's um, going to fill that area in pretty nicely. This is still neck and neck. It's very hard to call either way here. Yeah, again, I think on paper, TY to straight up fight his army, it does look better. But again, it's it's much going to come down to the air superiority control. And wow, look at this. Fusion core coming down by TY now. Yeah, and so that's going to obviously be considerably later here. Um, and so we got to watch kind of the time in between that. How exactly is TY going to play this out? But we've already got ourselves an extremely epic TVT here. Looks like Bunny wants to try to loop around at the bottom and maybe deny the 6 o'clock base there. Center of the map uh, as well on Bunny's side of the map, uh, if that makes any sense, is being taken there as well on both sides. So, I mean, we're running out of expansions. Yeah, and also worth noting for TY, he is not expanding to that 6 o'clock. He's just happy to have that mineral wall exist and provide you know, some defense to his natural expansion. He's expanding more towards the top right, more towards Bunny, which, you know, with a slower unit composition like Mech here for TY, it makes a lot of sense. Although I gotta say, I am a little bit scared of him, you know, sieging this position here. Okay, the rocks have already been destroyed, Never mind. <laughs> well, we got shots being taken at both sides. It looks like the center expansion can't possibly exist uh, unless, well, hold on a second. Actually, uh, Bunny's gonna go all the way around from the bottom here. I think he keeps expecting there to be a yeah. six o'clock expansion and there just isn't one. I, I think so. 
Uh, great usage of the Liberators really mutes these small groups of tanks out here. But the Viking count is so high here for T.Y. And he's able to drive this away. It's 26 Vikings to 15 for T.Y. I had no idea the discrepancy was so big at this point. T.Y. actually has very few siege tanks even on the ground, and he's mixing in Liberators of his own, not battle cruisers. So, But Bunny's making nine more Vikings of his own. Oh, this is crazy. There's so many Vikings on both sides. I mean, 26? It's like Sky Terran versus Sky Terran yeah. here, and we're at the 14 minute mark. It's wild to see. Um, we've got ship weapons finishing here for uh, TY. Again, six o'clock, still vacant. Um, I just have to say, by the way, that TY is looking so good considering this is his first GSL Codex oh, back. Yeah. He's going toe to toe with a top four Codex finisher from last season, Buddy, one of the most accomplished. Cold-ass Terrans. These are like the two best Terrans from season one. Yeah, this is you know. crazy stuff we're seeing out of TY, man. 26 to 24 Vikings now. Still in TY's favor. Upgrades. It looks like ship weapons level two is going to be about a minute and maybe a minute and a half ahead here for Bunny. So there is a window where he has an advantage. But I mean, this game is getting increasingly hard to call, frankly. <laughs> Bunny kind of consuming the map on the left side. T.Y. happy to split it down the middle and expand on the right side himself. This expansion now under siege. Okay, so I mean, 12 o'clock, I think he can live without this. He's already gonna go ahead and swap this position into the bottom left. We're finally at the point where we do have to point out we're running out of map. Yeah, we okay. are. Oh my God, big air engagement here. Who actually has more? Uh, it's 30 Vikings to 12, so actually Bunny has an incredibly larger amount more, and there's actually nothing to really stop this from getting pinned. Yeah, so, that, was, that was a very poor engagement there for T.Y. He's just gonna try and land, and now we're gonna have this little dance, You could dance, land I'm half imagining. your Vikings on top of that oh. and keep the other half in the air. <laughs> the planetary, though. <laughs> Vikings are saved by the planetary. <laughs> Crazy game. I think the mineral, oh, not the minerals, excuse me, the Marines on the low ground there for Bunny really helped out. It was only like seven or eight of them, but all that extra damage in, helping finish off Vikings and making it so that Bunny's Vikings aren't necessarily overshotting all the Vikings there for TY what? really proved to be a difference maker is a bad rally. Now there is a point where you do stop making Vikings. Yeah, it's Thor's coming out for TY, like five eventually, now. Eventually he sends all his SCVs out to die so we can get even more Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> and these Thors for TY are going to be a thorn in the side of Bunny because that splash damage here on Vikings, they're so prone to clumping up exactly like this when you move them across the map. And you know, they don't have that much HP, right? They don't have that much armor either. And keep in mind that vehicle weapons, very high level here for TY as we see these Vikings just getting shelled by this Thor. Did he just drop it right here? I don't think so. I'm actually surprised he moved yeah. so far forward. Well, it seems like, uh, yeah, maybe a little bit uh, too much. So he's gonna land here and try to counter these Vikings. <laughs> this is just so funny. I gotta say, these Viking dances were like, they're landing and they're lifting and they're yeah. landing and they're lifting are, are some of the funniest and most amusing engagements it's some that of we get in some of the weirdest too. interactions you can have, to be honest. The Viking uh, is really kind of a unique unit in RTS, <laughs> just in general, with the way that it switches from these two modes and flying and landing. Well, it seems like when Blizzard was making, you know, they were very afraid, like, this is gonna be too good. Right. You know, so it's like, I have like way more of a dramatic, like, lift off. Yeah. These Thor is getting a lot of damage done. Liberators are able to take some of them out, one Thor maneuvering out of range. I'm actually surprised that TY isn't going for the splash damage here. There's on almost those no Thors. ground units in this game. Yeah. This is wild. I actually want to look back at the units tab and really get an idea of what we have in the field. Is so there's 37 Vikings and 10 Liberators. There's a tank and four Marauders on the ground. Tank and for four Bunny. Marauders. <clears throat> 37 Vikings and 10 Libs is just nuts. And also, I'm. I, Getting stressed out looking at this, these 37 Vikings all at half HP. I would love for some SCVs to get pulled and repair those. I know. And you have to imagine when the Vikings are, are killed off, he's going to have to figure out what his tech's going to be. Because over time, TY is accumulating the answer. I'm almost surprised that he didn't just send the Vikings somewhere else, like the main, and just try to like do damage. <laughs> when they spread out like this, I mean, it really drives home. I know. We will blot out the sky. It's like that scene from 300, except it's spaceships it's something else to watch now ty does seem to have a comp that can deal with this cyclone uh 
are getting upgraded here for TY as the Liberators, I mean, with their superior range, just able to shoo away these Thors. I feel like there's an ebb and flow here for TY where the Thor count gets dangerously high, but the Liberators just, you know, almost easily zone them back out. And you know, notably, Bunny actually trying to take more bases of the map than TY here. And if this goes the distance and we play another 10 or 15 minutes and we start mining out all these bases on the flank sides of the map, then that can really prove to be a difference maker. You know, he's not wavering from this mass Viking. Oh! Oh! He's not wavering from this mass Viking play. It's a little odd to see. I do feel like TY is completely stabilized now. Yeah, I don't think we're, I mean, these armies can't kill anyone. They can fight and they can trade in the middle and they can try to, you know, skirmish over sections of the map, but these are never armies that are going to push across and end the game, at least not at this point. So it feels like we're kind of gearing up for the long haul. And TY right now, he's just playing a game of whack-a-mole of his own, trying to pick off these planetary fortresses because he does not want Bunny to mine the majority of the resources on the map. And I would love to see the total resources lost overall because, again, this is one of those situations where resource cost efficiency matters a ton going in late. And actually, a lot of Vikings getting cleaned up here by the Thors, the Liberators late with the Siege up. Actually, a lot of them in the front line getting taken out here by TY's Thors. And that was a very cost efficient trade there for TY, I gotta say. Viking count reset all the way down to four to four. Yeah, I mean, look at the supplies on both sides. It's, it's plummeted here. So the question is, how does the rebuilding come? I can't imagine that we're gonna see Bunny just go back into nothing but uh, Vikings and, and Liberators, but I say that there's nine Liberators being made. Gonna go up to 15 Liberators is Bunny. And keep in mind that those were armies that I didn't exactly check, but I think they were maxed, or at least very close to maxed. Yeah, they were maxed, yeah. But TY has 30 plus more workers than Bunny. So that yeah. was a very well-executed trade for him, and his Remax is also going to have a little bit more tempo here with his superior economy. SCG is getting pulled to get on oh top of these God. siege tanks. The fact that he went right into these Vikings means yeah. he can just shut down the Liberators. This actually could swing the game. It really could. All these Liberators get cleaned up. The best they can do is just continue to siege out and try to trade out with these Thors, and the army for TY now, I think, if I got the correct glimpse of that, yeah, it's three Hellions and 17 Vikings and one stray Widow Mine on the left side of the map. Yeah, this is a wild moment. I'm surprised we didn't see anything exactly like this last season, considering how many TBTs we had to co close well, out. I feel like somebody's doing something wrong. I don't like how Bunny's kind of played this out long term. And not that the accumulation of Vikings and Liberators was a, a bad idea, but it seems like he kind of stayed with this weird cop. You need to make something happen. Sometimes you need to max out, make something happen, then switch into another type of max out. And it seems like he kind of just stayed. It allowed TY to get to where he needed to be. And then TY's responded pretty pretty well from there on out. It's just tough when you have, you know, mirrored mech compositions with planetary fortresses and sensor towers out on the field to right. really make those plays. And I, I kind of like the game plan there for Bunny, which was, you know, control the skies, be more cost efficient with Liberator trades, which up until very recently, they were more cost efficient just by the looks of things. Right. And then just consume more resources on the map because you, then you win in the end game. But yeah, TY just with a superior economy and some very nice exchanges able to really eclipse Bunny and supply right now, almost max to the 140, 40, 144 supply of Bunny. And, you no, know, Bunny, with, at only 58 SCVs, a lot of those also on gas because this is a very gas-intensive army composition that he's running. Struggling for resources right now, and look at the bases on the map. I mean, TY is just in control. Well, TY has gotten to where he needs to be, and he's going to start advancing over here. And I think we're going to start to see um, the position get compacted here for Bunny. Oh, these are orbitals. These are not planetaries yeah. either. So Blue Flame Hellions, I mean, we keep harping on Bunny having this low SCV count. If TY catches wind of this and comes through. Well, here you go. And you know, this is one of the funny things is normally Hellions get no value, uh, but they cost just minerals and you always have a surplus of minerals. So it's like, you might as well use them. Well, right now they're getting real insane value in a 20, almost 25 minute game because they're just finding all the workers and there was already less workers over there. So I think the TY is about to close this out. It starts to feel that way. No planetaries here in the middle either as more SCVs continue to follow this engagement. 
going about 50-50 in the air, maybe slightly favoring Buddy here, I would say, but keep in mind that those Hellbats are doing so much work. Even SCV is getting pulled in the kill the command center. <laughs> this is crazy. And, uh, you know, I think there's definitely enough oxygen in this game for TY to just pull right back and remake whatever he needs to do. He's even going to right click on the minerals over there. Insult to injury, it feels like. Yeah. yeah. As Bunny now down to 27 workers, and although he does have the army supply advantage, he, again, this isn't a composition that you can really push with. It's Vikings, there's one siege tank, seven marauders, and four marines here for Bunny. And I mean, even with landed Vikings, as Bunny has, you're, you're not going to easily break through planetary fortresses or siege tanks, for that matter, as TY has been adding them in. I mean, the Liberators, they will be able to shoot them away, but I these are not cost-efficient trades. Bunny up against the ropes, trying to make something happen. I think he's just trying to make something happen, but it's, it's not going to work. I mean, you, you can't advance to this moment if you're down this much. There's 69 workers still in this game for TY, and we see a push coming here from Bunny that's really not getting anything done. No, not too much. I mean, he's trying his hardest, and... <sighs> He's just not really able to make any big plays happen. TY did lose some workers behind all of us, but it's still 70 to 33. He has the full bottom left corner. He's continuously threatening this base here at the top right for Bunny as well. And although this game might go on a while longer because a killing blow is still quite far away here for TY, it seems. I mean, his situation is so much better. I just look at the mineral counts right now. And yeah, I mean, Bunny did mismanage this. It, it's subtle, but yeah, he, he didn't quite have the right worker balance. And then uh, when TY came in there and basically punished that, you just look at the production tabs. I mean, TY is able to produce so much more. TY is going to get maxed out very quickly here. He might even be able to attack before that and basically squish the remaining bases that uh, Bunny has. 10 Cyclones in total on the field here for TY. 15 Hellions again. Not sure if he's just going to use those this kind of battle mech here with the Cyclones. And yeah, it seems like he is. Hellbats phasing yeah. in. He could just use the Hellbats as his cannon fodder. And, you know, these Cyclones doing work. Oh my god, these Vikings going down. GG. TY takes game one. Um, Okay, wow, nicely done. TY, wouldn't be surprised if we see him go mech again here in game two. This does seem to be what he kind of wants to lean on. And yeah, that was an awesome game. 27 minute epic TBT. I like it. TY in his first CODES map win in so many years. And it, he does it against one of the best Terran players in the business, the guy that took a series off of Maru, I think, in the previous GSL CODES, yeah. got top four. And a freak at TBT and very embarrassed buddy, by the way. <laughs> you can see that on his face, frustrated. Uh, it was kind of a weird game. I mean, definitely sat on the Vikings for too long. He had the counter tech in there, but he didn't take it to the next level. Um, and we're going to go to map two. Going to be ESL Gresman for map number two. TY up 1 0 here in the elimination match. Bunny one map away from being the first player knocked out of Code S in season two. All right, guys, we're going to get ready and go into this game. TY versus Bunny continues on. Can Bunny recover, GSL, or is he going to get knifed out of the GSL? Dome Freaks, TY. Mystery Gaming, Bunny. I'm surprised we did the player intros with this one, Tasteless. <laughs> a Bunny with a uh, 13 Depot, two SCVs already out on the map. Well, right next to TY's base. TY went CC first last game. Yeah, that's true. It's easy he's to forget. Gonna, he's not going to do it again, though, right? That's something you can throw in well, once in a best of three. Say that to Bunny before this match. He'd be like, oh, <laughs> maybe, and sends his SCVs across the map. From Switzerland. Welcome. Welcome. I get it, though. I get why he would do this. No, it makes sense, especially after such a long and epic TBT. This is something that can just really kind of sweep the rug out from under your a opponent. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And all these guys oh, are up, so up, good at... Whoa. Whoa! 
T.Y. is so smart. Yeah, that's about as good as it gets. Yeah. That's as early as that SCV scout is going to go. So T.Y. knows exactly what he's up against. We'll see what the response from him is going to be. So this factory is going to be thrown down. Reaper in production. All right. So it, it truly it is so much better to not have this spotted. You know, it, it, knowing it's coming, uh, it, it, it's a lot, right? So how does T.Y. want to play this? Um, he knows if he shuts down the Reapers, it's a great inconvenience to have two Raxes in the middle of the map. Um, he wants to come up here and intercept. There is kind of a, a roll of the dice where you're like, well, maybe I'll send my first Reapers up the place you wouldn't expect, like the natural instead of that kind of free little terrace you could take your way up. But he's not going to do that. Coming up the main. Nice uh, grenade the SCV. The yeah, SCVs are going to fall here, oh. at least one. Now the trick is from the attacking side is to not drop a Reaper. If you keep every Reaper alive, the momentum's there. Oh, it's a Whoa. proxy star for it here for TY. All right, three more Reapers coming in. Just one Marine, one Ooh. Reaper here for TY. That Hellion seconds away from popping. First Marine does go down. Hellion should allow him to control the situation, oh though. TY is barely hanging on with what he's got. The control from Bunny is really chopped here. Hold up. Ooh. He gets that snipe, but it's oh, a he trade. Gets his second one. Hold second on. Reaper goes down. Oh, I think he's not going to get the other one either. Wow. I think TY from this point on, he's, he's stabilized. And that's a Liberator getting built across the map. Now, Bunny, he is building a factory back at home. Not. Oh, oh he, get oh, he blocks it. Riggedy Rex. <laughs> he blocked it. Oh. Bunny wants to throw it out of Tech Lab. He Ow. wants to get a Cyclone out. That was sick. That was so many extra seconds. That was That's five or ten lot. seconds yeah. bought that that Cyclone is going to be delayed. Bunny, he, when he sees that SCV, he knows that there is something proxy on his side of the map. He scouts the proxy starport here in the natural expansion, and the Reapers are going to start doing work on it. But like, I know what you're thinking. You didn't know Reapers could do damage to buildings, but they can. <laughs> there's no anti here, though. Not until that Cyclone is out, and it just now started. Oh, TY's going to get some damage done with this for sure. At the very least, a lot of mining time should be lost. Yeah, this is super annoying. That's two SCVs fall. The Hellions are hunting the Reapers oh now. Goodness. TY is playing this so well right now. What is happening? Oh, sorry. That's the barracks in the far bottom right is being killed off. I saw some blinking down there. Yeah, it was trying oh to scout Oh, my God. It. He almost went into the, into the uh, Liberator zone. A Cyclone in the corner of the map now. Or <laughs> Cyclone Liberator, excuse me. It's but landed on that rock. Yeah. So, so much damage done, though, truly. I mean, all that mining time lost. Command Center now going down for TY. We, we might eventually reach a point where things normalize a little bit, but there's no denying that TY absolutely has the advantage after all these trades. I mean, buddy, losing so much mining time. This barracks getting, you know, sacrificed here. And the main base of TY, at least he will get scouting done with this. And the question now that I have is, how is TY going to choose to follow this one up? Because if he wanted to, I, I feel like he does have the opportunity to try and go for maybe some kind of killing blow or a big contain with the tempo advantage that he's gained right. in these early moments. All right, so he is... Uh... I mean, TY is in very good shape. I, I do think this is not, it's not impossible here for, for Buddy, but um, TY has played a great game so far, especially that Cyclone interrupting that. Uh, for the time being, things are developing pretty nicely over here for TY on his side of the map. There is an attack inbound going through the middle. Actually, it's almost over here towards uh, the natural. There's a Widow Mine and a tank. He might be able to actually fish, Ooh. yeah, fish that into the Widow Mine. Widow Mine connects. Ooh, got into Siege Tank range there for a moment. Gotta be careful. Yeah, I don't think Bunny can get anything done with this. No, it's he's gonna... exactly the wrong units to try to deal with this. Yeah, so he's just going to try and greet it out. But at least he got a little bit of scouting information with that. He knows you know, he had follow-up scouting on the unit composition after the barracks scouted exactly what the building setup is here for TY. And Bunny, after that poke, decides that his best way of getting back into a place of contention here on match point is to go for a really fast third command center, throw down two more barracks. Okay, so um, T.Y. 
flirting with the idea of maybe coming out on the map. Bunny with these three Reapers gonna try to wrap around the bottom. Again, the Reapers don't really have any utility. The further along you get in the game, so you might use them to try to spot for expansions or scout or maybe suicide into their base and kill workers. I'm actually surprised they didn't send the Reapers into the main just to try and pick off a couple of SCVs, but perhaps showing some now, respect here for TY and figuring a play like that will not work. If you look at the army supply, TY is uh, 20 supply ahead. So, yeah. I mean, that that's a pretty big deal on two bases. So, a lot of TVTs, you can have these kind of wild back and forths, and then somebody just comes across the map and kills the other one. It feels like we might be heading that way. Keep in mind that a lot of the army units that Bunny has been producing this whole time are not the best in a straight-up fight, such as those two Cyclones, for instance, and he's greeting quite heavily back at home. Double Engineering Bay, Third Command Center also done. And only just now is his infrastructure really starting to kick in, even adding two more barracks to bring that total up to five. There certainly does feel like there's going to be a window for TY to get some damage done. The question is, will he be able to find it? So is the main open? And if it is open, can he get in there and really do some damage? He's got a Cyclone ready, but he might be able to lead with the Vikings, and he might be able to even bait out the Cyclone targeting. He does. Does that allow him? No, it does not prompt him to try to come in the main. I thought that might be the idea there, but I guess, yeah, you're seeing kind of the, the river of units come out of the main there. It's like, would you ever want to fully move into that base like that? Especially with two Cyclones. There's no getting yeah. out of that. Yeah. So good call there by TY. But TY continues to keep momentum on his side here. He is expanding a little bit quicker. Uh, will he try to come in here for a jab instead? I think he's hoping, hoping that the SCB transfer is quite early here and you can catch some, but instead a little bit delayed. So these SCVs or Marines, excuse me, just going to retreat back here into this corner, dead air space. And I would love to get a look at the unit count. Oh, thank you, Observer. Look at that. Five siege tanks to four here in TY's favor. 26 Marines to 19. So that's where a lot of the army supply difference is coming from. Both players kind of neglecting the skies for now. And oh, this is a nice angle that CY has found. He's gonna try and get this siege tank here in the actual expansion. He is able to pick it off, but with this Raven with two disables, there's nothing really to protect these siege tanks here for TY. And actually, yeah, this is a pretty bare. Oh, he's just gonna position. get dropped on. Well, hold on a second. He's gonna drop, drop. Now, is there actually enough? I think TY can narrowly win this. This is such an interesting interaction here. It's so funny. It looked like TY should never be able to hold that spot. But he's kind of just barely making it work. He's going to shimmy some more Marines up here over to the spot, but a tank over here from Bunny is going to deny that. We can start to shell the gas, though. This actually adds up quite a bit over time. He should be able to shell the, the gas, but not having the Marines there to guard the tanks really felt like a little bit of a misstep for TY as it weakened the position so much. I felt like there was a lot of potential with that siege up there between the natural and the third expansion, but... At least for TY, this push a little bit weaker now. And oh, Bunny coming in. He's going to be able to snipe these siege tanks. Might even get a meta back. Nice snipe on the meta back there. Kind of a funny spot TY's fighting from. He's going to grow uh, furthermore uh, up into the top right. Production looking very good for him. But the army supplies have evened out. In fact, it's Bunny with even a little bit more of a lead here. So TY is not, uh, was not able to kind of continue to stay on top of Bunny. And Bunny feels comfortable now breaking free from this position, moving to the south. Um, it's not going to be at an angle where he's going to be able to stop a fresh base, though. Whoa! Nice widow mine connection there on that medevac. A little damage being done, and it does feel like TY has run out of a little bit of steam with these kind of fumbled engagements pushing outside the natural expansion of Bunny, and that has led things to equalize. And keep in mind that Bunny, behind all of this, he was greeting quite hard, right? He went for that very fast third command center. He right. went double engineering base, so he should have an upgrade advantage. And I was going to say an eco advantage, but man, TY, even in a series against Maru, just does not stop building SCVs in these series. He's back up to 74 here against the 60 of Bunny. And keep in mind, Bunny, if I'm not mistaken, had that faster third command center by quite a bit. Now, Bunny down here in the bottom. This could be a very squishy position here. Uh, TY is going to have to try to defend it. This is a lot from Bunny. Can he get the tank siege up? Seems like the siege was a little bit delayed. Yeah, those siege tanks are going to be in range not only of gas, but I think of that corner mineral. Yeah. That's a difficult position there for TY to try and break, especially without a Raven. 
Uh, he is going to try to shell it from above. It looks like that tank, in fact, is not quite in range. Does clip the Marines for a second. And it needs vision to go in and clip him again. And Bunny's going to back off here, but... Not too much damage really being found on either side with these pushes. But I got to say, you know, TY, as he's expanding up here to the top right, as this drop comes in, probably will ex avoid the planetary. I thought for a moment he might try to die the natural expansion, but instead thinks better of it, does Bunny. Oh, he might get caught. Oh, he has no boost. Oh, that was Goodbye. sick. Goodbye. <laughs> nice catch there by TY, but even... Without that catch, I mean, he's expanding so quickly. These 77 workers, just look at the minimap. The saturation on that fourth base is huge for TY. His economic advantage over Bunny is continuing to grow. And should he be able to skirt disaster from this drop in the main base? Well, I mean, four is going to be enough to get in here. The question is, could TY drop the drop itself? It looks like the turret line was actually not one where it could actually hit anything from that distance. And this is going to be a pretty hairy spot right now for TY. Yeah, Vikings are able to pick off one medevac, but it seems like TY is going to have to take a cost inefficient trade to just break this position here. Liberator sieging on the siege tanks. We're going to slowly take them out. That's going to prompt the stim in. Meanwhile, Bunny's going to use this as an opportunity to push the fourth base here, but TY gets a good engagement. Most of the Marines just get completely evaporated. Yeah, there's just enough Marines left over to kind of kill off those tanks, and I don't know that he can really break the spot, but a drop comes in here, which will force the tanks to unsiege. Two more tanks go down as TY is going to try to wrap back around to the side here and recover this. Man, I really thought Bunny might have a big window with how many for how much force TY committed to try to deflect that attack in the main base, but TY just completely on top of it. Saw that move coming, intercepted it perfectly there. And now with a 20 supply lead, I'm liking TY's position. These past few trades have gone so well for him. Now another drop hitting the natural expansion will have to go away. Only two Marines in that medevac as TY continues to saturate and take another base. Another drop comes in here towards the main. This isn't really doing anything. It just seems like what happened was Bunny might have been able to take this game and make this work, but he just sort of overextended. And as the dust settles, TY actually has more in basically every metric possible. Yeah, even the upgrades have equalized now. And Bunny, I think he didn't even start 3-3 infantry weapons. TY is the only player oh, researching right? them right now. So there's a big commitment here from Bunny to try and get something done. Perhaps feeling the pressure here. This is match point. If he loses this map, he is out of the GSL Code S for Season 2. And TY right now just building in momentum, especially with these Liberators continuing to push and shove his way through the middle of the map. Now he's going to try to come down once more. Uh, finally, that fourth base for uh, Bunny is being taken here. Uh, better late than never, but there's a huge drop in the main. And this main looks like it's basically naked. Like, there's just nothing going on to defend this. And with this much infantry, he might be able to just kill all the infrastructure. Yeah, at least some critical infrastructure like the starport will go down. And even these reinforcements coming in for Bunny don't seem like enough. Yeah, these gas guys are also going to get taken out. One of them was depleted. Supply Depot is also going down. This is a ton of damage coming out of TY. And also keep in mind, there isn't a lot to really threaten these Marines. Should TY just want to get up and go? He can. Yeah, he just picks up and, and runs right back out to fight another day. And no threats generated for Bunny on TY's side of the map. In fact, uh, oh! oh, boost. Yeah, Bunny going for a nice catch there. Just wasn't able to make it happen oh as TY moves God. across the middle of the map. A massive push and Bunny He's just now taking his fifth base. TY saturated his fifth base once that command center in the bottom left got started construction. So just constantly one base ahead in tempo is TY as he comes back again into the main base. Yeah, I mean, with this push over here in the middle, this may draw the noose too tight. I, I don't know that Bunny's going to be able to actually live through the rest of this. He's going to come forward. He's going to siege up immediately. TY cedars up to meet him and create that no man's land once again. With infantry weapons level three now completing here for TY, there's going to be a large window where he's able to use this upgrade advantage to trade favorably with Bunny's infantry. Should he identify it? A couple of siege tanks here, actually three in fact. Still going to step up and try and take them out to go down. Trading Marines for siege tanks here is TY as the counts fall eight to eight. Behind that also, Bunny was able to clean up those unprotected siege tanks there on the bottom left side. I think maybe five of them in total. 
getting taken out there. So the army supply is suddenly swinging in Bunny's favor. If he wants to make a play, this might be his chance to come back in this game. Yeah, is this going to be a reversal? It does seem like he's going to be able to get into this base over here. Not a whole lot to defend. This is going to make getting into the main even more easily or easier, excuse me. But Bunny is now moving down to the bottom. So this is getting very interesting. We're getting into a base trade-ish position. Yeah, but look at how many sensor towers are on the map right now for TY. They are spread across everywhere. So he has a very good idea that Bunny is trying to make this play. And it's going to be a doom drop heading into the main base. There isn't that much to prepare for this. TY is stimming in. Liberators are coming back. Only one siege takes siege right now as Bunny begins to fortify this position. And now it's TY's infrastructure that is under threat. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot of damage over here for TY. Funnily enough, clearing up most of this infrastructure might actually finally allow TY to come back in and fight this. But this is a major blow. And now another attack over here on the third base. I think the CC might be killed. The CC taking a ton of damage, should be able to escape, but 13 SCVs do fall. Army Supply slowly starting to equalize right now as Bunny has really been able to work his way back into this game in the past couple of minutes with some excellent maneuvering. Now, we should note that um, the income here is still better for TY. Yeah. So, I mean, he's still able, but he doesn't have a lot of those buildings. He's got to remake that very quickly. Um, and that third base for Bunny was denied, where, you know, look, a lot of infrastructure was killed here in the main for TY, but the other big story is going to be, you know, what happens if TY can then swing back again? Yeah, Bunny going to try and focus now on the triangle third base here for TY, but the reinforcements are just fast enough. TVT is a crazy matchup when you got good players playing it, man. Oh, yeah. I never get tired of it. It is so crazy. It's the most positional matchup we have in StarCraft 2 by far. For and sure. For positional masterminds like TY and Bunny, it's such a thrill to watch them go toe-to-toe -to -toe like this. I mean, the, the moments with this game, you can feel it swinging in TY's favor and then back in the Bunny's favor. And now, once again, in TY's favor as they're going blow for blow right now. The Triangle Third, once again, will get lifted. Wouldn't it be surprised to see TY just try and vacate that position for a moment and try to create a threat elsewhere on the map. This main base, looking at the minimap here for Bunny, there might not be much, even Parade pushing across the map. It's just this one siege tank. I mean, what is actually here to defend? Keep in mind that there's not a lot to work with here for Bunny. It looks like he's got one tank. Oh, a bit of a misclick there. Yeah. I think he clicked on the command center. Um, and TY is just creating problems and looking at the way his army is maneuvering on the map, I'm wondering whether he's either going to go for the triangle third of Bunny or try to set up a flank here on Bunny's army. And yeah, it does seem like it will be that triangle third. So he's been doing a great job of creating all these threats. And he has a very good idea that TY is heavily fortified oh, here. Oh, no! no! Oh, a bad misclick there by TY. A lot of siege tanks getting taken down, but at least he will be able to take this command center out on the other side of the map. You know, I was about to say the way the supplies have fluctuated in this game has been wild. But I was going to say that TY is probably going to take this. When he lost those tanks, that might have lost him the game. We'll see. Luckily for TY, he does have this Liberator advantage. So Bunny not able to siege down the command center here. It is still Bunny that's working with less economically. Yeah, this is a crazy game. Worker count for the first time in a very long time in Bunny's favor, by the way. Although he is still down on bases in the saturation, not exactly what he wants it to be because of that. Army supplies favoring TY. Most of that's in Marines. TY almost doubling the Marine count of Bunny, so Bunny cannot be caught unseaged. <laughs> All right, a stip comes in. Oh, it's going to force the unseaged. Unseaged The Marines come in to save the day. And yeah, those tanks sieged on the back line really providing the backbone Bunny needs. Otherwise, that could have been a disastrous situation as TY just continuing to balloon this Marine count. 80 Marines for TY to the 43 for Bunny, although Bunny also almost doubling TY in the siege tank count department. So both these players are going to have to play to the individual strengths of their armies. And Bunny, to his credit, at least to this point, he's doing a good job of it maneuvering around. But doom drops like this are going to be so hard to deal with a siege tank based army and this is a really clean drop on top of everything nothing that's going to spawn from these buildings is going to help he'll have to bring everything back and try to push back up through here it's going to be in a very bottleneck position siege tanks are going to be everything in a moment like this that's you doing a great job of controlling this ramp as the siege tanks eventually are able to push away a lot Two. more infrastructure getting taken out he's supply blocked right now look that's at that right that, all that's, these depots yeah 
And he's mineral star, oh too. Oh, my God. Oh, my god. Okay, hold on. There's Marines that could be. Ooh, yeah, good call. Good call. Yeah. You got to really know how to pick your fights. If there's stuff there, there's got to be a weakness somewhere else on the map. Yeah, Buddy is playing on a razor's edge right now. It feels like TY has almost every advantage. The mo more mobile army, more bases. Although the work count is not in his favor, the superior economy because of the better saturation as we get a quick look at the unit's loss tab. Almost dead even. Only one or 2,000 resources differentiating these players with tons of resources lost overall. And okay, Bunny gonna try and come in for this round. This might be his moment. A nice surround. A lot of Marines of TY getting cleaned up here. It's almost a full 360. Does Bunny have enough? He might be able to close this out, but more Marines push through. The tanks are a little bit exposed here. Can he get the Liberators over there on top of those tanks? Oh, it's a crazy play. This I love... A, this is such a good TVT, by the way. I this love is insane. Bunny. I love Bunny lifting up those Siege tanks to evade the three Liberators that are sieged right on top of them, but that will provide an avenue for T.Y. to maneuver over here and take out another base under construction from Bunny, and that has been the real weakness for Bunny's economy this entire game has been his low base count, but T.Y. just keeps shutting it down time and time again, so Bunny gonna try to go again with a counterattack. What is here to defend for TY? Uh, not a lot. I see a couple tanks here in the main, an unfortunate position to drop this in. But there's um, only no, there's almost no Marines here with this. It's almost pure siege tank, and a lot of them are very badly bruised. Tanks are gonna get some Marines, but you get just, oh my god, he's Another cleaning up the bottom. Base. Okay, hold on, hold on. The main, I think, it is sackable if TY can take out the bottom lab. I don't even think he needs to sacrifice it. Yeah with, yeah, with the Marines popping out of the barracks, I mean, it's yeah. basically a drop right on top, and there's nothing to guard them, you need, so... You need, like, at least six or more Marines around those takes Just a little bit more stim to kind of kill stuff off. All right, Buddy coming in once again, going to try and flank this very small force here for TY that's going to target... That was attempting to take out the last mining base for Buddy, and that's just going to be it. TY wins 2-0 in the Dude, elimination match. That was Buddy such from, a game. Buddy from top four in the last GSL code S. The first player eliminated here in season two is TY. It is second match of GSL Code S in how many years? Dude, I'm so hyped right now. Like on the break, I'm just gonna be wow. using battle ropes the whole time. <laughs> I'm just gonna be doing pull-ups. I'm just so hyped for, for how well TY played there. We got a great match coming up too. That means it's gonna be TY versus Classic, and that also means Bunny's out of season two, the first guy to fall. Yeah, but GSL Code S is delivering right from the gates. These have been yeah. some incredible PBTs, incredible TBTs. About the best games you could possibly ask for. Short break, guys, coming up next, the final best of three. Don't go away.
우주급 텐션 최고의 토킨 핫식스 토킨 똑같은 하루에서 답답함을 빼면 더 청량해질 거야 제로처럼 우리 없어도 되는 건 빼고 살자 실성 사이다 제로. 여름이 왔다. 마음껏 청량하자. 청량한 순간에 언제나 실성 사이다. 우주급 텐션. 최고의 토킨, 핫식스 토킨 라운드 16, 그룹 A 멍, T1, 클래식, 버니 아프리카 TV, 프리컵 스튜디오, 라이브 2023, GSL, 시즌 2 Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's time for the final best of three of the evening. Uh, I got to say, man, GSL always delivers. I mean, these games have been so good. And I'm glad we're going to end this with a PVT. Every single series so far has had really good games. And the players that have impressed me the, much, the most have been these guys right here, Classic and TY. Classic showing that he's kind of reinvented himself coming into this GSL code S, coming yeah. with some really creative builds. In his first series of the day, and I just love to see what he's doing. And meanwhile, T.Y., I mean, it's his first GSL Kodas back, and here he is 
one match away from qualifying for the round of eight after beating a top four Terran player last season in an epic TBT. You know, um, Classic, I, I'm, it's weird because, you know, TY is so hyped, but I'm almost more excited with how Classic's approached this. But TY, I mean, what he, what he managed to do versus Bunny, and the last game we just saw, by the way, best game of the day by oh, far. Yeah. I don't know that we're going to top that. And that might be the best game of the round of 16. It was so good. Um, but how is Classic going to approach this? He's showed a pretty wide range of uh, ideas. Does he have another layer on top of that weird proxy uh, combo into the uh, gold base, if we could get that? Yeah, we'll have to see. Notably, the path qualifying for GSL Code S, TY did defeat Classic 2-0. to zero, So right. there might be a little bit of metagaming, a little bit of trickery here as we get ready to go into set number one on ESL New Humanity. Last match of Code A. Or Code A. Group A. Group Jesus. A. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get it down Group sometime. A Code S. No, I still mess it up. <laughs> it's been a decade plus. Uh, all right, guys. This is it. The final best of three of the night. Let's see who moves on to the round of eight and who's knocked out of the GSL. Twisted Minds Classic. Kwangdong Freaks TY. It's been a minute since we had Cody. I'm surprised that's still on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, I mean, I'm glad we don't have Code A anymore. I, you know, it, a little bit of GSL history. It was fun when we had it, right? Because we got to see this qualifier league. But then when you look at it from, like, an expense level, it's like, well, it costs the same to make Code A as it does to make Code S. Yeah. You just have more Code S's, right? So that was the idea there. Um, the probe's out on the middle of the map. Yeah, I was wondering what that probe was up to. Looked like it first scouting by the Zelda Tower for any kind of proxies and now moving across the middle. Yeah, it seems like no matter what, Classic is going to send a worker out right away. Yeah. I feel like you, you kind of have to in this matchup. It's There's so many tricky builds that Terran can come out with. You know, yeah. so many different flavors of like a 1 1 1 opening or proxy barracks, proxy, proxy factory, proxy starport that you really want to gather as much intel as you possibly can as Protoss. And yep, all right. Command Center a little bit out of place, so I will have to lift that later. We're putting it back down. I always feel, I feel like it's such a win. Anytime that Command Center is like one oh, hex well, off, I feel so good. Well, you know why? Because you know how bad it feels when your build order is tripped up at all at the start of a game? Yeah. You're like, oh, I hate this. Now everything's like slightly off. Warp Gate started here for Classic. We'll see if he cancels that and goes for a quick Stargate, or if he keeps it, goes for a Twilight. Seems like it might be a Twilight Council opening for him. Curious to see, he has been mixing up his openings a lot recently, especially here today. I feel like almost every single game we've gotten a little bit of a flavor of these two adepts moving across the map, but the other things that Classic has done behind it have been so creative, and we haven't even really seen this Phoenix Colossus style that you know was his bread and butter last season. It's something he showcased a lot in uh, ESL very recently in the summers. Yeah. Makes them hard to predict. That's always the sign of a, of a great player is when you're hard to predict and kind of good at all the things that, you know, you've practiced. So uh, in this game, I mean, look, we've seen this plenty of times, not just from Classic, but from Protoss and against Terran for uh, years and years of Legacy of the Void. I mean, you're going to get the blink out. You're going to play defense. He's probably going to get a third base, although there is a variation where you can go uh, you know, Robo or Forgate into aggression, which um, some Koreans say is not good anymore. Uh, some foreigners still think is viable. Yeah, it's still very popular in the foreign scene. Max Pax, especially one of those Protoss players that just seems to always be able to find damage yeah, with I mean, Link Stalkers on different si sides of the map. Yeah, kind of coming in there and just seeing what you can get done. Um, yeah, with only two gateways getting thrown down in classic space, I'm imagining that we're going to have something you know, I would say that the typical Protoss player would go for a third and then go up to Colossus, but Classic, he's a little bit more conservative with those expansion timings. I would not be surprised to see him go for a Robo Bay, third command center behind it, and try and do a little tiny bit of blink pressure here with uh, Link Stalkers and a Warp Prism out of those three gateways. But yeah, the, the second Gas Geyser is, to me, the really big tell that we will have a Robo Bay going down with that. Nexus. Right, right, yeah. Well, then you're like, okay, you really need to get extra gas right now. You need to tech up even more. Um, 
And so we've got a medevac drop coming down here. There is a spotter pylon. I like that we're having stuff like this out. Yeah, both Classic and TY today showcasing some really great spotting with these uh, pylons and supply depots. Unfortunately, not able to catch a glimpse of this one is Classic a little bit late. Okay, does respond in time. So not bad, two probes and he's not gonna suffer any losses. Can these stalk, no, you know, it's funny. They're about a second out. They can't blink over the minerals and really catch it. Mm. It might have even been worth it to burrow that uh, widow mine and try to kill that <laughs> other pro, but. I love the observer going back to the Twilight Council to see the classic frantically chrono boosted it yeah, one last yeah, yeah, time yeah. just to try to get it so out, funny. but no, barely missed it. And yeah, here's the Robo Bay. Third Nexus goes down right behind it. That is a moment, you know, you were talking earlier about the command center being delayed and how you love that, but it's like all these little delays can mm. lead up to a moment where it's like, oh, had he been a little bit faster somehow, yeah. Maybe he would have been able to catch that. And a lot of RT other RTS games, those seconds, they don't matter too much, but StarCraft II is so cutthroat at the top sure. throw level. Yeah. More than any other RTS I've ever played, I don't know if there's an RTS that is as, you know, hanging on a knife's edge as StarCraft II. Oh, it, it, it's pretty brutal. I think it's the combination of the speed of the game and that things die quickly. Yeah. Where it's so. like, I mean, a Widow Mine, I mean, I remember when, when Widow Mine drops for, first became a thing and Protosses are like, are you serious? Yeah. I don't have my screen in this spot. If I don't catch this, I just probably lose the game. Yeah, I remember when the meta was to build a forge on like two nexuses as you take your third nexus and you build cannons in every mineral yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because like, well, that will probably <laughs> stop a widow mine drop. But then when you get high enough, it's like, yeah, but you have two cannons in, in your base now. That could have been two more gateways. The thing was, the thing was funny about it was it also didn't really stop the widow mine drop effectively. Like, if yeah. you have four widow mines, like, yeah, one of them's gonna die. You're still gonna get three shots off. Yeah, it. you're still gonna actually get in there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun watching StarCraft II develop over the years, and anytime these players can try to find any edge, even as, if it's just a couple of seconds, like delaying TY's expansion, for instance, they will go for it. And wow, Classic moving out with two sentries, a couple of units, and two more factories going down from TY. Is he gonna play Mech? Whoa! This is crazy, Tasteless. This is wild. I was not really expecting this. I really thought TY was going to play more of an ordinary game. It's kind of funny. Um, we have players that do like to mess with Mac. I just didn't think the TY was going to be like coming back and then using this in this matchup, right? TVT, sure, fine. We've seen pretty much every Terran have a Mech phase in, in tournaments. They're like, well, this is kind of what I'm running right now. People have kind of figured out my bio style or, you know, whatever it's going to be. Um, but yeah, to use it like this now, you know, a lot of times all Protoss have to do is get four or five bases up, uh, an array of splash damage, and they're kind of, like a lot of times their job's done. Does that make sense? Like they're like, no, I, I got what I wanted. Yeah. I have the tech and, and I'm happy to fight, but a mech game makes the, the dynamic of the game very different, right? But when you go mech, especially if you're gonna be heavy on siege tanks, which clearly uh, TY is, a lot of times you don't have any way to interact with the other player, which, you know, would prove to be a situation that would allow Classic to kind of get to where he wants to be. So let's see how TY wants to handle this in a longer game, because I don't think this game's going to be ending before 10 minutes. Yeah, and I'm wondering exactly when Classic is going to catch wind of precisely what TY's game plan is, because this is mech, but it's not battle mech. It's slow mech. We got siege tanks coming in, and with this Phoenix coming through, I mean, 18 Marines right now in the middle of the field. All right, the Phoenix is going to make its way into the main base and scout these factories. So TY, TY, excuse me, Classic now certainly does know it's mech, but what is the approach going to be here as Protoss? And you see him instantly start to poke a prod forward, but I mean, those siege <laughs> tanks catch, they, they have such a punch. Stalker well, just instantly evaporated. Stargate thrown down there by Classic, proxy gateway here at what could be the fourth base for TY. Now, Mech, uh, we see at least against Protoss. We see it more against Terran, and then probably after that we see it against Zerg, right? Um, but when Protoss have to deal with Mech, a lot of times the games kind of almost look like Brood War games, where the Protoss takes a lot of the map. They're very happy to make lots of gateways. They're happy to kind of have these um, kind of unconventional games where it's like, all right, I'm going to trade in my army many times over. I'm going to rely on counterattacks many times over. Uh, and, and it kind of take advantage of the fact that the mech army is clunky. And then because I could take up so much of the map, I could basically make a lot more units and trade them out, even if it's inefficient, because I have more bases. For Classic, the response is going to be three Stargates with a fleet beacon. I, I'm assuming it's a Tempest, but Carrier's also a possibility here. 
later on as Classic right now just kind of sharking around the middle of the map. A push from TY at this moment could be very scary because keep in mind with those 18 Marines that he has on the field, the threat, oh my goodness, this Warp Prism. <laughs> Threading the yeah, needle. So, somehow it's not dead. Oh, the depots are down here, but yeah. okay. They're like, don't stay down forever. No, attack through. Yeah, I thought for a moment TY might actually just try to push across the map and start sieging down some bases because his standing army is very powerful. And yeah, carriers coming out now for Classic. And he's going to try to attack in here once more. Now, I guarantee you that Classic oh, nice. wasn't expecting to play this game. Really good force field there. Yeah, that force field sectioning Ooh. off the SCVs. 20 of them in total falling across multiple bases. Nice win there for Classic. But, I mean, TY, just every single game he's played, whether it be against Maru, against Bunny, against Classic, he does not stop making SCVs. He lost 20 SCVs. He's still at 77. Yeah, he's not done. I mean, he just pumps them out until he's max. It's crazy. Uh, Classic has reached all the way through to the bottom left. It is going to try to reach all the way up to the top right with bases. Um, he's maxed out again. He needs to look for another trade here and basically keep the supply cap oppressed here for TY. He would like to start to remax on a better army composition. Yeah. I love this from TY. This is the third time TY has dropped a scan exactly like this. He knows the tech options that are available for Classic, but he doesn't know exactly how Classic is navigating the unit composition. So he's scanning the Robos, he's scanning the Stargates at different time intervals to see, okay, what units are coming out right now? What army do I need to make oh the deal with it? Oh my really goodness. Really good engage from Classic here. Somehow that tank doesn't die, but, um, and then he's gonna use that supply drop to make three more carries. He's already got three out. Six is, you know, I know it's double, but it really, it's a lot more than three. You know, it, it, it's a, a very scary number. That's and in that time, he can, you know, get all, all the interceptors and everything else he needs. It's a very snowball -y unit, and looking at the unit production here for TY, he's just right now pumping Vikings and Siege tanks, and I, I understand him wanting to replenish the Siege tank count after you know, losing a handful of them outside of that middle base, but it does become a little bit scary because, you know, just pure Viking alone against Carrier, should some Tempest start to get mixed in with that, suddenly you're playing against this long-range unit. It's a very awkward dance where the Carrier's in a straight-up fight. I just win. Now, um, you know, it's funny, I was talking earlier about like, well, a lot of times it kind of looks like a StarCraft 1 PVT, and a lot of times that's like just, you know, mass zealots and, and stalkers. We saw a hero do this, I can't remember against who, but he, he fought somebody who mech'd. Uh, but you can also in StarCraft 1 just go carriers yeah. uh, versus mech, and so that, you know, that's what we're seeing right now uh, over here. Yeah, gateway and, man and carriers, both StarCraft yeah, 1 and StarCraft yeah, 2. Just, <laughs> exactly, and, and so he's basically gonna roam with the carriers, and this allows you to snipe um, the tanks. Or, or anything else that looks like, uh, you know, an enticing place to get. So now our turret ring goes down. Yeah, this is to deal with the carriers, but I'm not sure if Classic, or TY, excuse me, is aware that two more Stargates actually got thrown down during all this. So Classic yeah. is making an almost pure sky toss switch. He's, he's getting Tempest, right? Yeah, Tempest are in production. He's also getting the, uh, I never know what the upgrades are called. The one that makes him do more damage to yeah. buildings. Tempest <laughs> damage upgrade. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's it. <laughs> That's my new head cannon. This is a nice trade, by the way, here for Classic. That's a lot of carriers going down. Does he have? Does yeah, he have like air? Does he have vehicle armor or something? I mean, that was pretty sick. I yeah, thought that would that, be that, better. I kind of thought these carriers are going to be a, a fixture of this game, and now we're already back down at two. So, yeah, not really the engagement that Classic wanted there. And you know, one thing that's surprising me here for Classic is that he's not really establishing many outposts in the middle of the map, as we often see players do when they play mech where they will throw down you know, some shield batteries, some cannons, just to provide the ground support for a mostly air army. I guess at this point, you know, going with Disruptors and Colossi, he doesn't feel like he needs that just yet, but it would be a boon in a situation where Vikings can just dive the air force like we just saw. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, right now it's clear that TY is not going to die. Okay. Um, but Classic is not getting impeded. Like, he's just continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, if you look at the incomes at the bottom, Classic's is comically big. We actually almost never have games in any matchup where, like, the income is this insane. Yeah, we almost have 200 supply of workers between both players, which is just crazy. It's crazy, <laughs> Especially man. for a PVT of all matchups. 
You know that the quadrant rule we talked about in StarCraft 1, where Terran can't get out of their fourth, their like little quadrant of the map, is generally too because true because of siege tanks. And I know in, you know Mario kind of makes this not true in TVZ, and that's that's really why he's exceptional. Um, but you know when you go mech against Protoss, it is hard to like you know take half the map. Although with this middle base here as TY, it does make that a little bit easier. You don't really need to come too far out of your shell to expand from four bases to five bases and get that critical fifth gas. Yeah. So that is nice here for him. I mean, if TY right now is just sitting on four bases without that you know, high yield Vespine geyser in the middle, I wouldn't be surprised if his gas count right now is very close to zero, but instead able to build a bank is TY is. We have Classic once again pushing in. Disruptors will trade out for Widow mine, handful of siege tanks, but this game is becoming increasingly about the air. 21 Vikings on the field now for TY, and now starting to mix in battle cruisers and ravens. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's funny, we're watching him come in. Very, very bad trades. Again, if you have this much more of the map, you can kind of do that, but these trades are really bad. Like, I, all that, all those units for like a tank and a turret, you know? It makes me wonder what the game plan is exactly for Classic. And I, I know that these yeah. gateway units are the least valuable units. You know, you're only throwing away... Like, you're throwing away these mineral units for gas units. You're killing these siege tanks. Right. And potentially, TY might want to remax on those or invest in something else to try and deal with these run-bys. But what is the game plan here for Classic? Because it feels like TY isn't truly breakable. I mean, Mothership here is underway. We're getting basically every single upgrade on the books for both players. I mean, Yamato Cannon's coming in. I'm sure we're going to see DT Blink come in as well. It, for Classic, he's just trading cooldowns for structures, but it, it feels like it's hard for him to find any true avenue to break TY out of his shell. And TY now setting up what is eventually going to be a planetary here in the top right. Two planetaries, in fact, one by the Zelnaga Tower. He's going to have half the map, and considering how cost-efficient he's been to this point, that's an endgame that he wins, unless yeah. Classic is able to make something happen. Well, the, the danger for TY is going to be for how spread out the map is. If he finally gets that, that's where you, it gets a little bit easier to kind of penetrate one of these positions. Classic continuing to move, move forward. Another siege tank does get taken out, but... <sighs> so funny, actually, all that distance fighting. Yeah, yeah. That gateway that uh, Classic threw down earlier probably cost TY maybe, maybe 1,500 minerals in terms of boss fighting <laughs> time. That was crazy. Uh, Classic's finally taking the last spot. Yeah. We're out of bases. It's that kind of game, everybody. Setting up an outpost in the middle, too, with cannons, shield batteries, and I might be one of the players that, and I'm a little bit biased because Protoss is my main race, but personally, I do feel like Terran is a little bit favored in these extreme late game scenarios because the static defense is just so solid, especially with missile turrets. Once they get high sync auto tracking, it's hard to really dive on them. And the long range of Vikings and the cost efficiency, I mean, you truly just need to defend. Yeah, As I Terran mean, you just kind of wait it out and let the game, let the clock run, right? Yeah, I mean, photon cannons are good, especially in the early game, but late game, they're nothing compared to a mineral-based economy that's functioning on orbitals and planetaries and missile turrets for defense, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, Vikings, you don't really think of them as that nimble, but they are fast enough to snipe nexuses and pick up and leave. Uh, certainly in this case. What is with these uh, sets of immortal pairs moving around the map that I aren't getting anything done? He's just trying to take out bases like this one. But TY now with Battle Cruisers out means that this is not really a viable strategy anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the last of these little uh, immortal hit squads that we saw coming out of Classic as the window is pretty much passed. So he's going to have DT blink. The idea is he just blinks right on top of the CC and then dies before TY can really react. Yeah, and then maybe recall out or go for another base depending on the army positioning. And it'll be a good move. He will get this planetary. And coming out into the middle of the map, armor shredding missile will connect Whoa, with these a carriers. Oh, move here. Okay. Yeah. Not the best. That's so funny. The cannons are like, no, we're still here. Yeah. Shield petters. No, not so much, my friend. Pretty good. And, oh, the mothership actually recalling Gibson. Terran's so also funny. teleporting back home. 
This is really like this. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a battle from Star Trek. Or something. Everybody's just like phasing out. <laughs> it's going for these leaps. Like, you, know, you go to this side of the board, I go to the other side of the board. Um, but he has kept the Terran off of those two bases on the upper right, and he's going to start to push in here. Can he actually break this position open? I mean, the Vikings aren't here, so the carriers can kind of have their way. Yeah, Classic is doing a good job of controlling the game, but you know, TY also, with those battle cruisers, was able to deny that top right expansion. And looking at the banks, definitely favoring Classic at this point, but it's hard for me to tell whether that means he, he's truly leading. <laughs> you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's so hard to call and these kind of split map, split map scenarios. Well, let's go big picture for a second. Protoss has a crazier bank with both way more minerals and way more gas. Um, you can warp in, you know, a lot, all your basic tier one units. Obviously, you have to make everything else from the Stargate and the Robo, et cetera, et cetera. But um, Protoss has had way more of the map. Terran has had, like, occupancy over parts of the map on the edges, but hasn't really mined from it. That's kind of true for Protoss as well. Um, but, you know, Terran should be mining out um, in, in these, this sort of quadrant position that he's been in, right? For, for longer, or sorry, sorry, should mine out sooner. Um, yeah, especially with a high so, worker count that TY's had at this point. Yeah, and, and mules, right? I mean, I'm sure he scanned a lot too, but eventually mules will have sucked up everything else. So pretty soon there's only gonna be one or two bases Terran can mine from. That, I think, is going to be true for Protoss, but I think it might even be slightly later. And I, again, I could be wrong about that. This is kind of a, a tricky one to call, just looking at a big picture. But um, I think in this situation, if Protoss can trade into the Terran, I think he's going to have the funds to remake quite a lot and can then maybe swing the game. Even if it's like just charge zealots that go to a command center and, and force it to pick up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there is potential for that. I'm looking at the minimap now, and I think in terms of mineral fields, you've kind of hit the nail on the head where Classic does have, it seems, at least a little bit more. So this top right base here for TY, it's gonna be a point of interest for both players as Classic would love to try and deny that yet again. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he just has like a little bit more mineral patches <laughs> kind of everywhere. Five more Stargates in production. I think that's, what, 10 in total or something? That's crazy. Yeah. Love the Stalker Warpin coming in just to deny those Vikings. Oh my god, great ooh. storms. Oh, ooh. that's a lot of damage. Uh, I don't that even up. know what to say right now. Yeah, the <laughs> that's such a weird fight. Battle Cruisers are going to teleport <laughs> out of that as it was not a favorable engagement, although the shields for Classic's army did dissipate. And Classic just going to recall back to safety now. And then look at this. And, you know, <laughs> the Stalkers. What a funny yeah, move. There are hardly any gas, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, they're basically like zealots. You know, minerals in, the, in a long game like this don't really mean that much. But he can run in and trade those out for tanks. Yeah, that's now, true. Um, and, and look at where we're at. It's kind of back to that quadrant. Yeah, it does seem like it's Classic's MO just to try and keep TY on these five bases. And TY just continuously keeps trying to re-expand here to this top right expansion. And... Now with DT run buys and potentially more attacks like what we just saw with Templar, Tempest, Carriers, it will be difficult for TY to secure that position. I like that this is the play that he's making right now, going for an expansion now in the bottom left. Meanwhile, building another command center to lift up to the top, top right. Bit of a double expansion. And wow, even Void Ray is getting mixed in here for Classic. A unit that I, I frankly don't see very often yeah. in these situations. I'm not really sure what to make of it. Yeah, I mean, it's I certainly don't, don't. it's good against battle cruisers, but Yamato and also Vikings pick them up so easily, right? Yeah, but maybe you're okay with that, having them in the front, because you kind of have to get rid of them with the Yamatos, right? And then the carriers stay alive. That's tough. Oh, there's energy on these Templar. Yeah, that's a oh, big storm. Oh, what? Blink coming in with the battle cruisers on top of oh. all the carriers. The entire oh. Sky Army here, but Classic is falling fast. Stalkers are getting warped in on the low ground, but there are so many battle cruisers with so much HP. Classic right now, he's remaxing back at home, but he lost almost his entire fleet. He did, um, but what is going to be remade from this? Right now, definitely a, an advantage here for TY as he continues to roam. Uh, he used his warp, so it's it's not a quick trip. But we're going to have 
I think it's I think you're right. I think it's ten battle cruisers. I'm oh, sorry, ten carriers. Uh, how many battle cruisers are in this 13. game right now? Thirteen. I don't think ten carriers beats this. It's gonna take two rounds of production from these stargates, but to really can, make something happen. If you compare it with stalkers, because again, remember, Terran's gonna run out of money. Ter Terran has eight hundred ish gas, uh, sub two k. Protoss actually isn't that far off either, to be honest. Yeah, but 1.4 is just double in gas. So. Stalkers, even with their bonus damage against armor, they do not fare well against max upgraded battle cruisers. And so I, I would expect that's to true. see them go for more hit and run tactics. I think really for classic, the, the unit that's going to deal with the BCs, it's going to be Tempest. But you know, with, with BCs, when they blink on top of your army like that, it really does kind of negate that kiting ability that you have and oh, okay here we go now look at this he just ignores it and goes elsewhere yeah and you've been you know th that recall from the battle cruisers is a resource in of itself now he could keep sending the zealots out now remember protoss is still mining from a lot right i think i, I wish we could actually do like a, a full check here but well just based on incomes right now three thousand resources per minute to yeah. 800 minerals per minute there for ty gas income coming in as well here for classic the standing army for ty 100 percent better right. than what classic has but classic he does have mobility yeah and he's able to kind of chip away uh at this now a, a attack is coming down here we got a lot of resources over there stalkers coming in uh we do have templars for size storm a lot of tempest dude crazy amount of tempest there's nine tempests out here right now i'm wondering how many more are in production is Base does get taken out. Classic now re-expanding to the bottom left. In the top right corner of the map, if you're wondering what that unit is, it is the Mothership. So there is potential for some more recall shenanigans from Classic. Should that top right, right base get saturated, he can recall units to that Mothership and then recall back out, similar to the way the BCs are used. Now, notice this too. He took out that command center. There were actually three patches there. Terran's not working with a lot. No, he's not. And he's going to take this one out too. Now, look at the minerals for Terran right now. It's about a 1,000. And, he's down too. And, and you know, and, oh, look, he's going to try to box him in. I think he could just use a recall to save these. He will. Uh, for that range, I think that's a mothership recall. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Coming here into the top right, battle crews are going to come in. That mothership almost certainly will be taken out. But I think he's okay with that. Yeah. Now, again, TY might still be able to pull this off, but this is like a, a really unusual game here. Oh, interesting position to bank these units here for Classic, by the way, all the way in the bottom left corner. So where is Terran mining from? I um, guess the, 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 the like one o'clock base? At one o'clock and also soon to be in the top right base. There's only 28 workers right now. It, it, notice the stalkers, I mean, they're not ideal against battle cruisers, but they can snipe a straight battle cruisers. And very small numbers, yeah. They, that, yeah. This is the situation that they do shine in. They can it, actually pick up some kills. We have four more Tempests coming here. We don't have any attacking units being made. There's five SCVs being made. Um, Classic has 5,000 minerals in the bank and almost zero gas, by the way. So That's right. It is a little bit, it, it can be a little bit, this what's is kind the of word? It. Right, right, right now, when they engage each other, I mean, somebody has to, to win and, and kind of snowball it because yeah. there's not enough gas in the game. I mean, yeah, you could both just make a bunch of Marines and Zealots or something, right? But, you know, it, it, I... Most likely, it's going to be somebody either has battle cruisers or a Protoss that has air support, and he kind of swing it and take out this last base. I almost I want to. I would love for the observer to click on these Vespin geysers here at the Triangle there for Classic and see exactly how much they have left. And man, Classic, if he's able to trade out Zealots and Stalkers here for Vikings, this is so good because he's trading minerals for gas. And yeah. the army that he has right now in the sky, 13 Tempest, only two oh. carriers. Oh, let's go! Yeah, he's going to be able to get at least one battle cruiser. The fact that the BCs right now have their teleport ability on cooldown is huge. Yeah, and, and you know, these things, they really do begin to add up. The little bits of damage that are happening here and there. The fact that the Zealots are starting to take out these depots. The fact that um, the Stalkers are starting to snipe a Viking here, a battle cruiser there. The fact that, you know, the only way he can come back is to either bring back the slow Vikings, which again, they have to trade out. They're not being repaired, by the way. Uh, which makes the air fleet a little bit weaker. Yeah, and trading out more Vikings for gateway units. This favors Classic. Classic with literally zero gas income at this point, and Widow Mines are going to spot this coming in. But keep in mind, this army that you see on screen, this is basically all Classic has to fight the battle cruisers. And if there's one good in engagement for TY, if he gets the battle cruisers to jump right on top of that Protoss army, 
It could still just be GG. It doesn't matter how many yeah. of these buildings well, like, that Classic know, the, is the able Yamatos, to kill. The Yamatos could just all connect. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, TY's army, 14 battle cruisers and 18 Vikings, that is still terrifying. Although all these trades that Classic is doing are so good for him, it's a very scary proposition considering the fact that Classic can remax with literally four stalkers as anti air and nothing yeah. else. Maybe a void ray, maybe one tempest. It's but funny. that's not gonna win the game. He you know, needs gas. These widow mines are really big, by the way. Just he's slowly eating away at these zealots. Eventually push is gonna come to shove, and TY is going to pounce on the position of classic with these battle cruisers, and whoever wins that fight will decide the fate of this game, I think. He's gonna come into the main. I didn't re I really I, expect this. This is this might be an overextension. I feel like this can't be the right play. I thought he was gonna go to the base at the top right, but maybe that's the idea. Maybe he could send Zealots up there now. Yeah, he is committing hard. There are also missile turrets here. This is gonna make kiting even more difficult. Only two carriers, BCs. Okay, recall comes through. Hit All right, one. so that was the play. <laughs> oh All right. man, skirting Nicely disaster. Done. Now. Um, Technically, the Terran's income right now is actually better. Absolutely, especially so, with the gas. I mean, Classic needs to start mining gas. There's no way that every single gas guy is on his side of the map is depleted. Yeah, he chases that away. I mean, these ones are out. The ones so at the 9 o'clock are not. He's going to try to bait out one more move, and then he's going to recall over to the upper right. That's the play. He's got the mothership ready. So he wants to try to confirm that the air fleet's over here. Now he's going to see the battle cruisers there, which means he goes, okay, well then I'm going to just destroy your main. I'm going to destroy all your starports. What a crazy game. And and once, because the Vikings are not enough. The Vikings are supposed to be kind of like a deterrent, but if he senses the Vikings, then I think he can kill the Vikings, right? Yeah, it's going to take another recall. Battle cruisers should be off cooldown soon. Vikings are able to pick off one Tempest and... Yeah, the carrier's taking a lot of damage here. Yeah. All right, so he's done it. He's forced the recall. He's gonna go over here, and he's gonna try to hit the top right. I, I think that actually TY wins this game. I, I think TY does as well. I mean, I, the gas income is still non-existent for Classic. Yeah. He has 11 Tempest and five Stalkers. That's not going to beat the 11 Vikings and 14 Battle Cruisers of TY. TY yeah. is mining gas, he's mining minerals. These tactics, these hit and run tactics are so good, but they cannot match the force of TY's army, and here we go. Yamato's now coming in on the Tempest. There's only 11 of them on the field. Classic needs to do Stutter Step Micro to have any chance of fighting these BCs. Yeah, but I think that's game. I think he actually did it. Wow. He very patiently chopped up the battle cruisers, took out the last Nexus, and has enough battle cruisers to defend this. Uh, it looks like Classic's going to try to push through here, but I think there's just too much. Um, Air support. Even if he were to kill the command center, he would just be able to lift off another one and land it over there. Yeah, and with such a low Tempest count, I mean, you only need to teleport a couple of ECs at a time, too, yeah. as we see TY doing now. And that's the last of the anti air here for Classic. Wow. And TY wins a 30 minute slugfest. What a game. Man. TY bringing the mech versus Protoss. We, we haven't had a game like that in forever for that matchup. And what a crazy one, too. I mean, Classic yeah. made the best effort he possibly could with these hit-and-run tactics with Zealots and Stalkers moving across the map, trying to trade gateway units for gas units because he recognized how dire the situation was, but he could never get his gas income back online. There was a 10-minute, it felt like, period, where yep. the gas income was completely stunted there for Classic, and as a result, he was never able to reinforce that critical anti-air. TY builds up the ultimate Sky Army. You know, I, I, I gotta say, one thing I did notice, like he never cleared out those mines. There were so many Zelts who were just bled off. Yeah. That kind of allowed the Terran to mine that up enough to where the Terran didn't have to commit on the, the Protoss. The Protoss had to commit on the Terran. Uh, but I mean, you could spend hours talking about that game. There was so much happening there. We're going to go to map number two right now. TY 1 0 versus Classic. Again, this is the final best of three in Group A. The winner moves on to the round of eight. The loser dies and is out of the GSL. 2023 GSL Season 2.
twisted minds. Classic. Dome Freaks, TY. Is TY gonna mech again? That's what I'm wondering. I bet he does. I, 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 I can't recall exactly, but I feel like basically every game that he has won so far today has been on the back of mech. I think you're right. At least two, possibly all three. Hmm. You know, um, yeah, I would not be shocked if he met. He, he seems to have, like, in all the matchups come with that. Welcome back, T.Y. Watching yeah. since 2010. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. <laughs> Hope you get that autograph. Make sure to stick around out of the show. After the show, right. should be able to get a chance. By the way, I hope my voice has been holding up for this cast. It has I, been. It I've has been, been. I was sick for 10 days before this uh this uh, GSL, so I was like, my throat is still like swollen. And I'm, I mean, I'm not in, uh, contagious, but like, man. Yeah, yeah, you seem healthy now, but just dealing I'm with the collateral damage. Yeah, man. It takes a while to get that health meter back to full. It's rough, man. I remember being a kid and just loving being sick. I'm like, I don't have to go to school. <laughs> I play games all day, and then I'm an adult, and I'm like, oh, oh, I still play games all day, and this is terrible. The like, morning cartoons were also the best cartoons, they too. They were the best, man. Felt like such a special treat to get to watch those. Yeah. Nowadays, know. these kids, they just watch them on, like, any streaming platform. They don't they don't understand. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's 11.30. <laughs> That's when this cartoon comes on. <laughs> By the way, proxied uh, Stargate. So whether or not we have mech, um, we don't know if we Ooh. will. But but this game may end up really coming down to whether or not TY can survive what um, Classic has planned for him. Yeah. Classic has been doing this. A fair bit in his PVTs. We haven't seen it too much today, this proxy Stargate into what I'm assuming is going to be one Oracle and then Blink, but I, I love how much he has been mixing it up so far today. Oh, yeah. In terms of build order difference, because, you know, we, we, we talked about this in Group D of last season, how often he would just go back to his bread and butter, which was Phoenix, Colossus, every single game it felt like. It, it just was so flimsy, you know? In theory, sometimes it can work, and by the way, this... Reaper, actually, I, I should have paid it more respect. I didn't expect it to get this much damage. I should have been talking about this from the beginning. Two probes in total going down, a full scout. Reaper takes pretty much no damage. He emerges unscathed. Classic was able to do a little bit of counter damage in the natural expansion of uh, T.Y. I think he might have gotten one SCV, although there might be both SCVs in the bunker. Oh, I think I think that's actually what it is. I think but, they went um, back in there, but yeah. But yeah, Classic, he is really reinventing himself in this matchup in this season. And it's so refreshing to see. I hope that we get a game three no matter what here Same. today because... I think, I think we definitely could. I mean, it, honestly, there's another world where Classic won that last game. I mean, that was yeah. a really interesting one where it was, like, really hard to call until the very end. Honestly, I was casting it as if Classic was going to win. Cyclone's going to be ready, and I think it's going to be just out of vision range. So I think you can actually get this one. Maybe with a no. scan, didn't have one in the bag. I mean, even this, even if he did have a scan, it would have been very close. I think it would have come down to the final hit. Yeah, but it's it, gonna be. It's a bit painful when you send the Oracle in and, and you know immediately it gets shut down and put back out. I think I saw. No, sorry. I thought I actually thought I saw three gates. It's two more gateways being made here. Sometimes when you see this build, you will see the additional gates and they'll really try to lean in uh, onto the position. And not really classic style. He's been more favoring. You know, one one Oracle going to three gate blank add a row behind it, and then you kind of get back to that typical classic mid-game style where you have Blink a handful of Blink Stalkers, Colossus, and eventually just try to stabilize on those three bases, get to four with Charge Disruptors. So we'll see if he's able to do it. I'm watching TY's production tab with interest. <laughs> he is going for Stim. He's building an engineering bay, so it seems like it will not be mech this time. Now, again, uh the role here for TY is really one of survival, right? I mean, he's just kind of trying to build into a, a safe spot where he's going to have his turn to come out on the map. What Classic wants to do here is come in here and trip him up and kind of find that Achilles heel or, or find the jugular or whatever it's going to be that's going to allow him to kind of get in there and do that critical damage. But, uh, you know, there's really only one of two ways this can go. It's either going to be Classic getting the killing blow or TY with a perfect parry. I think we could get the rare chance where they, you know, it's a back and forth and they both trade out and the game goes on. But 
Um, let's see if he can get that. He just sold off the bunker, so this is like kind of the moment you want to try to blink in. Yeah, but TY's ground army with 20 Marines feels like it might Whoa! still be tough to deal with. <laughs> Oracle turns on a dime, but TY, I don't think, oh, Stimpak is done, so he is yeah. able to stim away. It finished like as he saw the Oracle. Yikes. It was actually a really confusing moment to try to gas, because I'm like, wait a minute, he should be able to stim and kill that. Oh, he can't, he's a second late. This is a scary moment for Classic, actually. Should this Marine count continue to balloon? Because we only do have those three Adepts and nine Stalkers on the ground. There is one Oracle as well, and yes, although there is Blink on the field, Colossus still a fair bit of time away. T.Y. throwing down a very late third command center here. I was thinking he would try to find some damage with his group of units that he has on the field right now, but perhaps no. No combat shields does make it a little bit harder to micro against this. It's about one less hit for the Stalkers yeah. to kill these Marines. They're a little bit squishier. Um, and for now, Classic just continues to roam. He's not going to be able to get in there, though. With the placement of that Siege tank, the way TY's developing, TY's looking very, very comfortable. He's going to get more barracks down here. He's not even necessarily going to try to push out and win. He can get his third CC, land that up, uh, and go into a different game. By the way, no mech. Yeah, no mech. We're not, not in that game at all. I really thought we were going to have it again, but uh, TY going to try to close this one out on a very different note. Yeah, five barracks in total will be the build of choice here for TY as he's feeling a little bit more confident moving across the map now and yeah I, I do wonder whether he will go for a fourth command center and try to play for more of a maru-esque mid and late game or if he'll pull the trigger and go for a timing attack because the siege tank production from ty has not been constant he only has two on the field right now the third one is about to pop his cyclone barely gets the last hit off on that oracle and you know for me seeing this low siege tank count makes me think that it is not going to be something that's one push that's going to happen anytime, particularly soon, maybe something right. much later in the game is in the cards here for TY is, for now it seems he's happy just to set up this third base and play defense back at home. Just getting a little feet wet there. It's <laughs> a funny Whatever. sound actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, they should leave I, little, little footprints when they walk across the map. I haven't heard this sound very, very often, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> It's almost out of place, yeah, like, yeah. like, like, like a nature almost, game yeah, or something. In, inappropriate, right? Like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's, this epic battle game. You're like, it's wow. oddly peaceful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, right now, Classic stays outside of range. Uh, he's got a good setup to try to poke into the main, blink in, uh, mm -hmm. and then run up there with the Colossus. But he's going to come over here instead. This is a lot. Is this going to be too wow. much? Wow. Classic blinks in. Is able to take out the first. Siege tank, but that is a wide arc of Dude, Terran units. I think this, this might be a bad nasty. engagement. Oh my god. I mean, the Colossi are still kind of doing a lot of damage, but ultimately he's just able to dive and cut right through. And, uh, you know, I, I was a little bit surprised when Classic attacked him, but I thought, well, let's, you know, let's see how this actually pans out. Maybe he's got a timing. Well, he clearly doesn't. Sometimes this is how you see a pro in a game, is the other guy just completely bungles an attack in there. Yeah, that was about as good a concave as going to get in that situation. And right now on the field, Classic has eight Stalkers and one Disruptor and not a lot of money in the bank. If TY had God Vision like we do right now as casters observing this game, I think he would push across and just end this thing. Instead, he's going to wait. He's going to build up a little bit more. He's been teching up to Ghost during all this, so he's going to wait until he has a number of those out to make the push. But that was so many critical units lost for Classic that for now, his game plan, he has to buy time to Remax. I mean, he is building not only a second, but a third robotics facility yeah. back at home as kind of a Hail Mary play to get some unit composition out that can deal with this, as wonky as it might be. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Classic went something like almost pure Blink Stalker Disruptor because truly it's going to be a very difficult fight for him to Deal with this army on screen right now. Well, I mean, TY is going to try to seize the moment here. He's going to try to come forward here. There's quite a lot of tanks. Uh, TY's control is superb. He only drops a Marauder. It baits out the second shot. It does nothing. Uh, there is... There's some Zealots that are going to run around and try to hit this. But I I'm a little bit worried here. I mean, if Classic can't get control here and keep this Nexus alive, he may just die out. All oh! right, Disruptor Shot comes in. Ghosts are able to... 
avoid it. Nice control here by TY, losing almost nothing as the Bio continues to shell the left side of this base. Disruptor on a bad rally coming in. Classic during all of this is raiding the third base with Zealots. More units getting warped in, but this triangle nexus, it is forfeit. The probes are going to go and try and saturate the fourth base. Three more disruptors in production, but it feels like Classic might be on his last legs. Yeah, this he just doesn't have enough. Uh, I, I don't know if TY wants to just try to pull away from this uh, or if he wants to push into the main, but like, this is pretty bad, man. Where are these? Oh, he's saturated okay, already yeah, yeah, in the yeah. third base. He has 70 probes, so just going to send them to the fourth. Build a nexus there, and the disruptors, they just keep coming. Classic knows that yeah. he is in such a bad position. He needs to do something truly absurd and just hope that some of these disruptor shots connect. He has eight disruptors on the field right now, building three more out of a t at a time out of those robos. I mean, at this point in time, it's really hard uh, to see Classic winning a fight. I think the only play is to have disruptor shots that, that oh my god, almost do like what we thought might happen a second wow. ago there. Wow. Nothing, not a zilf zero. Um, and, you know, at this point in time, it just seems like every little attempt that Classic has to try to get any headway here on the map, it's backfiring. TY is almost maxed out, and I don't think it's going to be long before TY pushes down to the bottom right and flattens those faces as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. And Classic moving across the map like this, this is not him confident in his position. This is him recognizing he needs to do everything in his power to get whatever seconds back that he can because he wants to close the distance on maxing out. If he can max and take, say, one good engagement where TY bungles the splits on the disruptors or maybe gets caught by some disruptors going for a flanking maneuver, suddenly Classic might find his way back in this game. I mean, he has three robos. He's been double expanding behind all of this but he has to weather the storm that is TY coming. Nice blink forward, able to section off a good number of this bio. We'll see if the disruptor shots are there. He does get at least one ghost, so he will force back his position for now, but look at the six o'clock tasteless. TY about to take down another base. Yeah, he can, he can uh, part ways with the army over there on the left if he can just clean up this base down here. That being said, the supplies are pretty even, but you know, uh, growth for TY is looking so good. Um, and look, I mean, look how long it's going to take Classic to walk across the map and do this. In fact, I think he realizes that as I'm casting it, decides to maybe try to come from another angle, either to intercept this as it tries to come back home. And TY is just going to pick up and either move to the natural expansion or that very far fifth yeah. base. Yeah, main, main is also, there's a lot of good well, options I guess here getting for him. these robos is actually very, very attractive. And Disruptors are such a good unit for zoning out right now because the Stalker count, it's so low and it's very difficult for Classic actually to come into this position in a cost-efficient way. You see the Disruptors oh God, just getting the melted by the Liberators. At least the War Prism comes out, allows oh. some micro-potential, but Classic's army is so immobile. The Siege Tanks, or not Siege Tanks, excuse me, the run by coming into the top, the Triangle Third is also going to fall. I think TY might be moving on. I think he's basically closed it out. Oh my, my god, goodness. 40 kills on the workers. What a game by TY. What a series. What a day. This has been really something else. And man, you know, I, I was so excited that TY was back. I didn't really think he was going to be able to survive the group of death. I mean, Marn was already enough of a problem, but when you incorporate Classic and Bunny, you think, no, there's no way. But here it is. It's happening. TY, after having such a long hiatus, after coming into Legacy of the Void in really a very, very different era of the game where the matchups themselves are operating in a very different way. And he is able to come out on top. Classic is going to try one last Hail Mary play. Only three mining bases and two of them are only mining maybe half at that. He's going to come here into the expansion planetary fortress. Nice connection with this disruptor shop at the bio for TY. There might just be too much. This army is almost pure disruptor. All the disruptors popping, trying to take down the planetary fortress out of spite. But the supplies ballooning now for TY. Classic is tournament life on the line, doing everything he can to try to fight back. But I mean, we can see everything right now in Classic. Yeah, I mean, the numbers just aren't there. He's going to try to attack into this planetary once more. Uh, great repairs there by even more time as Stalkers continue to fall. The ground armor upgrade is going to finish, but oh so late, another warpin comes in. Oh, these poor disruptors. They just want to kill this planetary, man. They want a consolation prize for this game as TY pushes across. 
the other side of the map. A recall might come through for Class, but he could very well easily tap out. 89 supply to 178. He's trying his best to make anything happen. Getting on the production team for TY is a nice step, but the forces for Terran here just overwhelming. Yeah, there's just too much. Um, and I mean, you know, at this point in time, oh, uh, there's going to be enough that can be produced, or, you know, in fact, he can even try to pick up with what he's got here and go back home. The infrastructure is going to be destroyed. You can't make any more robo units. Soon you can't make any more gateway units. Uh, and there's so much of an income right now here for TY. Yeah, this is all but doomed here for Classic. He gave it a valiant effort. He showed a day's worth of great games, but at the end of the day, it's going to be TY advancing on. Classic just digesting this defeat. <laughs> it's actually kind of crazy how far uh, Classic's managed to take this. Yeah. But, I mean, just look at the main base. 22 yeah. workers for Classic, 14 army supply. You can see the yeah, look on like his face. Yeah, he finally processed it. He's like, yeah, this is it. I mean, I'm it was a, on. a valiant effort, but oh, GG. TY advances from arguably the group of death here in the round of 16 of GSL Code S. I gotta say, this wow. is already such a crazy story. The two Terran gods move on, one from the current and one from the past. And look, TY, I mean, he had some shaky games for sure against Maru, but who doesn't? And you know what? They're not gonna be interacting with each other for a long time in this tournament if they have to cross paths again. Yeah, and I mean, Classic, it was a great day for him. This is a tough matchup for Protoss right now in the current meta, PBT. Yeah. He came through with some clean ideas, but wasn't able to advance. and. Now we're going to hear from the second player to advance from Group A. No more TY casting for a little bit longer, man. <laughs> okay, TY, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> you look very, very happy. Tell us about your thoughts. I didn't have really any expectations today if I was going to qualify or not. I didn't know. It seems like my uh, choice in the game itself was a little bit better than uh, what my opponent had planned. Yeah, this is my first offline match after a long time, so obviously I'm very happy to uh, have won. What is your MMR on ladder? <laughs> I played my hardest today. I can go over what my MMR is. Probably over 5,800. No. Anyways, I spent a lot of time basically prepping my build orders based on my opponent's play style, and that's the only key you need to win. That's what matters. All my prep, um, it paid off according you know, to how my opponents played. So anyways, I'm happy about that. So, what you're saying is all about execution and offline matchups. Well, anyways, I, yeah, I have a bit of a different approach to uh, uh, my opponents than I guess what I would normally do on ladder. Uh, on ladder, I'm just kind of uh, grinding out basics. Oh, he's mentioned that he didn't have a chance to really play pros on the ladder, so, you know, he kind of had to lab out his own stuff, basically. Since you have low MMR right now, seems like you're inspired to try to um, improve and, and bring in a new uh, TY here. I think it's some tips for some of the other players. Did you hear what Unity said? I did not. No, I think he just was talking about the meta. Oh, but what, I what's strong in the current meta? Okay, they was hearing what's strong in the current meta. All right. Thought I heard a unit, sorry. 
So you said your your goal initially was to make it to the round of 16. Uh, what are your new goals? And do you have anything you want to say to the fans? Personally, I think I showed a good performance today. Um, I hope my fans are satisfied. Obviously, I couldn't make the cut last season since I made it to the quarterfinals. Uh, I'm going to have to get further than that now, so keep your eyes on me. I'm going to give my all this season. That's wow. it. That's the interview. Man, T.Y. advances. You know, that that's a cool story. Yeah, what a day in the GSL. You know, we're two for two also with Terran players advancing already from the no! round of 16. Oh, God, you're right. <laughs> this season sucks. I take it all back. Truly, More though, domination. every single series that we casted today had such great games. I mean, Group A today was an absolute treat. We knew it was going to be fantastic matches coming into it. Right. It went above and beyond in terms of delivering. Some of my favorite games from the year already were played in this group and Maru and TY advancing in pretty incredible fashion. The great games, uh, you know, and props to Classic. I think he, sh he showed a very good range. I think Protoss is in a tough spot right now, uh, no doubt. Terran seemed to really have gotten a handle on the game. Um, and look, this might be the group of death, but I think these other groups are really exciting. You don't want to miss them. Again, every Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 p.m. KST. Because when GSL is going to be starting, we've got three weeks of nonstop action. Then a week off, we're going to come back on that Thursday for the finals uh, with a studio audience. That's right. You can come down to our event uh, here in Samsung Station. Uh, tickets are about uh, $6, 8,000 won. Yeah. On Thursday, round of 16, Group B will be Hero, Nightmare, Ragnarok, and Beyond. As Chase has said, 6.30 p.m. KST. Do not want to miss it. Should be a really exciting one. Hero, one of the only other Protoss hopes here yeah, in GSL yeah. Code S. He didn't play that well last season. It was kind of weird. We were really, you know, starting the season off being like, well, I mean, Hero's going to be probably in the finals. And then he died out pretty fast. But that's why we got a couple seasons a year. Nightmare, obviously, welcoming back uh, him. Um, you know, he's always one of these guys that's overshadowed, I'd say, by the other players in GSL. Bjorn uh, has looked to improve quite a bit. He's been very motivated. He's been in good form. Uh, and Ragnarok, obviously, just recently has been in the best condition he's ever been in before. Yeah, I would love to see Ragnarok get some redemption and have a good performance here, yeah. a good run in GSL Code S Season 2. Uh, As, um, oh, yeah, on-site viewing Tickets go on guide. sale on Friday. Yeah, so I think they can buy the tickets for the Thursday match online for next week. And each following week, those tickets go on sale the Friday after we cast. Sometimes we sell out tickets, other times we don't. Today we had a, a pretty full studio, but there were still seats open. So um, if you want to ensure that you get in, especially if you're traveling here, buy the tickets. My hand's blocked. Buy the tickets um, Friday. Was it Korea time Friday? Friday. Just go for Friday. You should be okay. <laughs> Yeah, Korean oh. time on Friday. Okay. We're I think Korean it's time Friday. 7.30 p.m. or something. If not, yeah. just go 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 back. You can do that. You can rewind go back the video. To the <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely do that. I know we have a lot of people that fly out here, and I'm happy that those people that fly out here can finally uh, see the GSL live again. That makes me yeah, so it's happy. so good having a live audience Warms again. Warms my little nerd heart. Um, yeah. So that's all the time we have, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll be back Thursday, 6.30 p.m. KST. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>